Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Namika's heritage revealed Naruto Chunin exams harem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Orz and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Revelations. Okage's office. I think it's about time you went and saw him Jiraiya. Saratobi said to his former student as he looked out over Konoha. Are you sure he's ready? I mean he's already had one shock to the system, he doesn't need another. Actually I think that's exactly what he needs. He needs to know that someone other than myself is going to be there for him when things get tough, and with his life as a Jinchuriki, there's no doubt things are going to get much tougher, just look at all abuse he's taken from the village so far. He wants to be real a ninja and earn the respect of the village, show him what it means to truly be a ninja of Konoha Jiraiya, to carry the will of fire, sadly the people of this village haven't done much to set an example for the boy. Jiraiya stood, rubbing the back of his monstrous white mane, thinking about what he was even going to say to the kid if he agreed. Do you really think he can handle it? Jiraiya, as much as we want to protect him, he's about to go out and face the world as a genin, even as a genin things can go wrong. He needs every advantage we can give him, he needs his godfather, and he needs to know about his heritage. After this recent incident with Mizuki, I think he needs to know everything. We can't have this happen again, we, or more frankly, you need to prepare him. If you won't do it for me, do it for Minato. Looks like I don't have a choice. But that last sentence the Sandame Hokage had put the final nail in Jiraiya's coffin, there was no way that Jiraiya could shirk his duty to Naruto any longer. The boy needed a father figure, even if Jiraiya wasn't always around. I knew I'd have to get around to telling him everything, I guess now is as good a time as any, Jiraiya said, resigned to the situation, when you are ready to introduce me to the boy let me know. I'll be doing some research in the meantime, both men sniggered despite the seriousness of the situation, and with that Jiraiya jumped out of the window and disappeared, see old man. Good, the boy needs to know he has someone other than Aruka or myself, hey wait. What did he just call me? You're not getting any younger. He screamed out after one of the three legendary Sanin. Jiraiya quickly made his way through the village, roof hopping over to a small fence beside the natural springs to catch a quick glimpse at his afternoon delight, the ladies section. Oh they were all natural, all as naked as the days that they were born and each of them gorgeous. Man it's good to be back in Kanoha, the women don't disappoint. He though as a blush crept up his features and he sniggered while writing in a book, a gleeful expression on his face. Little did Jureya know his sniggering had attracted the attention of a small boy who had been wandering the village, head down, as he contemplated everything he had recently learned about himself and the people of his hometown. He finally knew why everyone hated him, but it didn't make it hurt any less. He looked up, wondering where the noise was coming from, and saw a largely built man squatting next to what appeared to be the boundary fence of the women's bath section of the hot springs. He had crazy white hair and was wearing a strange outfit. Pervert Naruto thought as he watched a man snigger and write in his notebook. Picking up a rock he threw it at the man, hoping to distract him from his perverted activities. When it didn't seem to do anything he continued around the corner of a building and headed home. Due to his rigorous and fantastic research, Jiraiya didn't bother turning straight away when he felt the rock hit him in the head, he was too busy getting an eyeful. By the time he had turned around all he saw was a small boy in an orange jumpsuit rounding a corner. Goddamn kid he thought. The rock had barely registered, and his annoyance was soon forgotten as he turned back to scene of a naked full-chested woman, giving her friend a back rub in the spring. Oh yeah, just like that. Naruto awoke the next morning to knocking at his door. He quickly jumped out of his pajamas and into his orange jumpsuit, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes as he opened the door. He was greeted by Siratobi and a strange man with waist-length white hair and a hit eye with the kanji for oil on it. Hey Aji san Naruto yawned, turning to the other man, hey, wait a minute, you're that pervert that was hanging around the springs yesterday. And you're that kid that threw a rock at me, I mean come on, who does that? Jurei replied just as heatedly upon seeing the orange jumpsuit and putting two and two together. Pervert. Naruto yelled. How could you say that? I'm a super pervert. Jurei exclaimed, sounding offended someone would underestimate his perverted nature. Weirdo. Naruto said while making a mental note that that move might be super handy with dealing with this guy. Siratobi could only stand there laughing. Okay Naruto calm down, I came to introduce you to this man, he knew your father and has a few things to tell you that I think you should know after your last escapade, which we know wasn't your fault. Siratobi added to make sure Naruto didn't get too defensive. This man knew his father. Siratobi seemed pretty friendly with him too. Despite the man being a complete pervert Naruto was interested. So who are you? This Naruto is one of my former students, his name is Jira. I am the almighty toad sage, the ferocious, the fearsome, the deadly, the magnificent Jiraiya of the Sanin. He stopped dramatically every few words to change his pose as he went through his introduction. 
He cursed himself for the lack of room outside Naruto's apartment, else he would have summoned one of his toads for dramatic effect. Saratobi and Naruto could only face fault at the rather pointless introduction. Yes as I was saying Naruto, this is a former student of mine, Jiraiya. He is also your godfather. At this Naruto could only stand with his jaw dropped. His godfather was one of the three legendary Sanin of Konoha. More importantly how was it that one of the legendary Sanin and his godfather happened to be a massive pervert? Well I'm glad I could at least do the introduction, sort of, but I have things to do, and it's likely that you two will want to get acquainted. Saratobi said as he turned to leave. Hey wait, you're leaving me alone with the kid Hiro Senen here. Naruto and Jiraiya both exclaimed in unison. At that Saratobi could only tilt his head back and roar with laughter at the two of them, yes they'll get along fine, he thought as he recompassed himself and began to stroll down the street, leaving the two alone. HMPH, well come in, you might be a massive pervert, but apparently you are my godfather and have some things to tell me. Naruto said to Jiraiya. Well actually I thought we could take a walk, looks like you only just got up, bring your wallet, we should get something to eat before we sit down and have a chat. What? You're not paying. The FFT, no kid that's what you're here for. Some godfather you are, Naruto mumbled under his breath. Hey I heard that you little snot, now come on, let's go, he said as he walked a distance away and stopped, turning back and waiting for Naruto to follow. As much as Naruto begrudged paying for his food when he had what was as close to a guardian as he would ever have sitting next to him, the Raymon he was downing certainly cheered him up. Alright kid, let's go for a walk, then I'll tell you everything that you need to know. Okay. Okay, Naruto said as he finished up his meal and they stood, the small orange clad boy walking out of the village with his strange godfather. As much as he thought the man was strange, it was nice having someone to just walk with that wasn't Aruka. The spot they had chosen was one of the training grounds for beginner genin, it was peaceful and quiet, and they both sat beneath a large tree, sheltering them from the heat of the mid-morning sun. Alright kid, I have to warn you that you may not like what I'm about to tell you, but you need to know. You need to grow as a shinobi and a man, and some of this might be a shock to your system, but I think it's best if you know now. You know who the Yandame Hokage is right? Yeah, he was the last Hokage, and he saved the village by sealing this monster inside of me. And since then everybody has hated me. Why do I need to know who he is? He made my life miserable. Naruto could see where this was going, and his anguish was already showing on his face. Naruto, he wasn't the only person who saved the village that night. You saved the village. By having the Kayabi sealed inside of you, you prevented the destruction of the village. The people of this village should see you as their savior. But they are afraid of you. Fear rules their hearts and they can't see you for you who really are. All they see is the fox that went on a rampage. For that I'm sorry, and for that I bet your father is sorry too. He did the only thing he could to save the village and sealing the Kaiubi into you kid. Your father was the Yandame Hokage Minato Namikas. But why would he do something like that to me? His own son. Naruto asked as he looked up, tears streaming down his face at what he was learning. Because he knew that one day you would make him proud. That you would bear the burden he placed on you and become a savior of the village. It seemed he had confidence that you, the savior of the village, would grow up to do great things, and people wouldn't know you for what is sealed inside you, but for who you really are. Naruto broke down as he came to terms with why he had such a hard childhood. All Jiraiya could do was sit and wait for the kid to calm down. Kid, I was once told a prophecy that one day I would have a student, and a decision that I made would mean the difference between that person bringing peace to the shinobi world or casting it into darkness forever. For a while I thought that would be your father. But now I think that your father always thought that it would be you, his son. I know it's hard, but you have to understand that your father loved you, and he wouldn't have done something like this unless he truly believed in you. Your father believed that you would become a great shinobi, he had faith in you before you were even born kid. But I'm not a great shinobi. My father put me through hell. Naruto was on the verge of losing it. To find out that your father was the Yandame Hokage would have been fantastic if it didn't mean that all the pain and misery you'd suffered your whole life was because of him. Your dad believed in you Naruto, he believed that whatever hardships you face, you'd overcome them, and I believe that you will. Great shinobi aren't made overnight. You have a lot of hard work cut out for you, but I believe you can make your dad proud. Why? He was my dad. He was my dad. As Naruto screamed, breaking down, Jiraiya pulled the young kid who'd already had to suffer so much into a hug. He had to save the village, and you were the one he chose to carry his dream of peace into the future, his own son. And I'm sorry too kid, Jiraiya muttered when Naruto had stopped the worst of his outpour. What do you have to be sorry for? Naruto asked, leaning back and wiping tears from his face. He understood what his father had done to save the village, but it didn't make it any easier for Naruto, and it didn't make him any less angry at him or hurt that he would do such a thing. Because I've heard how hard it's been for you, and I should have been there for you too, Minato was like a son to me, and I should have been there for his son. 
I've been busy working for Kanoha gathering intelligence, but it didn't mean I shouldn't have been there for you too when I could. Jiraiya said while Naruto gave him a weary punch to the side, yeah I know kid, I'm sorry. But I'm here now. I won't be here all the time for you, but when I am you'll know about it. I'm gonna turn you into a shinobi who inspires courage in comrades and instills fear in enemies. Got it. This got a slight nod from the still very upset Naruto, good, now anything else you'd like to know. What was my mother like? He asked meekly. Ha, ah, Kishina Yuzumaki, the red devil. Man that woman was feisty, but she was also a beautiful caring, loving woman, and I wouldn't have had Minato with anybody else Naruto. Both your parents were amazing people Naruto, and they cared about you immensely, as hard as it might be to believe. Meet me here tomorrow morning if you want to start your training with me. Okay. We'll see, Naruto said as he got up and walked home, not sure how to feel. Well sensei, this is either going to make or break him, we can only hope for the best now. At night Naruto lay awake in bed, hundreds of thoughts crossing his mind. After everything he'd learned about the creature that was inside of him and who sealed it inside of him he was angry. But he couldn't stay angry, he knew that. From what the villagers had always said of the Yandame, his father had done everything he could to save the village. I guess I was his last resort huh? Well it didn't matter now. All I can do is progress forward. I have to become a great shinobi so that everyone in the village understands that I'll protect them like my father did and I'll be respected. I'll be Hokage one day. And the only way I'm going to do that is through hard work. Not staying angry at my past. He was relieved though. For so long he'd never known, and now he did. It felt like a part of him had been completed, that uncertainty gone now that he knew who his parents were, and that he had a godfather that cared about him, even if he is a pervert. And with a final thought about how he had one more person that was going to look out for him when things got tough, the Jinchuriki of Kanoha went to sleep with a smile on his face. But at least he came, that's a start Jiraiya thought as he watched Naruto walk over to him from the opposite side of the field. How about you test your skills against this old man huh? I need to find out exactly what I'm working with if I'm going to turn you into a master shinobi, they told me you didn't too well in the academy, but that can't be right, not about someone like you can it. Jiraiya said to Naruto after the kid arrived at the training ground, trying to fire Naruto back up after yesterday. He could see the fight creep back up into the kid's eyes as his resolve steeled. No, they've got it dead wrong, I'm going to be Hokage, Dadabeo. Naruto replied with a smile, and with that he jumped up, the spar already taking his mind off of the angering revelations for now. Good, well let's see just what you've got, I want to see if you can hit me. When you can hit me once, I'll teach you an air rank secret ninjutsu that only I know how to do. How does that sound? You've got it Iro Senen, be prepared to cough up a secret technique. And with that Naruto crossed his fingers in a seal and shouted, Taj Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone Jutsu, creating over 150 clones, Jiraiya found himself in a sea of orange. Well would you look at that, huh, well come get some. The legendary Toad Sage shouted in challenge at the crowd of Naruto's. Twenty Naruto's charged in at Jiraiya as he stood in the middle of the clones. They were attacking from all sides, Naruto smirked, getting a new technique is going to be easy. He obviously didn't know what it meant to be a Sanin. Jiraiya lashed out at the first clone to approach him with a hard right, dispelling it, while simultaneously dropping into a crouch and following with a low sweep that knocked the legs out from beneath a bunch of clones, dispelling four more. In a flurry of tojutsu the remaining 15 clones were destroyed by horrifically powerful blows. Well crap Naruto thought. All he could do was stand and watch as his clones futilely attacked the legendary shinobi, getting cut down by vicious strikes. Standing and watching as Jiraiya cut through the numerous Naruto's the original had an idea. It was a long shot and he had no idea if it was going to work. First he needed to test this guy's defenses and for that he needed a better assault. He started coordinating groups of clones to attack from certain angles while others converged on Jiraiya from opposing sides, attempting to catch him off guard. It didn't matter though, no matter what angle he attacked from or how many clones he used they were all cut down. Even when it looked like Jiraiya was about to be overwhelmed, he simply performed a jutsu that caused him to be surrounded by his hair. His hair. It then proceeded to turn razor sharp and cause all of the attacking clones to be destroyed. Naruto was starting to see why this guy was a Sanin. It didn't even look like he was trying. I mean sure, Naruto understood that he wasn't much of a challenge to any shinobi yet, but the sheer numbers he was throwing at this guy should have phased him a little bit, shouldn't it? He had to learn that technique to become stronger. He had to gain respect from the village. Naruto made a clone to stand in his place and rushed in with a group of clones attacking the Sanin, his hair now receded. Jiraiya was shredding the clones, and Naruto could only wonder what those punches and kicks felt like. He got right up next to Jiraiya only for him to lash out with an incredibly fast punch. Naruto was ready, he shifted slightly to the side as he tried to step past the punch, but it clipped him in the shoulder. The force was enough that it would have wiped out a clone, and Naruto cried out with tears in his eyes from the pain. 
He desperately tried to lash out with a punch that would land, but Jiraiya smiled and quickly followed up with a second punch that launched Naruto out of the fray, slamming into a nearby tree. Darkness enveloped his senses as a he fell unconscious. When Naruto came to it looked like it was mid-afternoon. Had it been that long already? Ah kid, ha, I see you've woken up. Jiraiya said as he offered the boy what looked to be an ice block. That hit, damn. You are so strong, and you want to train me? Thanks, he said as he took the ice treat. Ahahaha you've got spirit, and you've got guts, what were you thinking trying to attack yourself? Jiraiya asked. Well I noticed that you were attacking my clones, and it seemed that after a while you got so used to them being clones that you never bothered to check whether or not they dispelled. Good, the kid's observant. Ahahaha, well you were good to pick up on that. I decided to make it look that way to see if you'd pick up on it and to see how you'd react. I like that you noticed, but your plan of attack was a bit brash. How are you feeling? A bit sore, but overall I'm fine, Naruto said as he rolled out his left arm and then his right, switching the hand holding the ice block. You're pretty durable kid to take a hit like that and those chakra reserves, geez, no wonder you could never do a regular bunshin, you have way too much chakra. Probably thanks to your resident fox. Cage bunshin are better than regular bunshin anyway. Do you know why? Not only are they solid, but have you noticed a special trait they have? Um, I haven't been using them that long. But the more I fought you the more I understood about how you fought. Understanding that wasn't coming straight from me looking at them get demolished. So I'd say that whatever they learn or see, when they get dispelled their knowledge gets passed to me. Bingo kid. Here let's do a demonstration, make a clone. Jiraiya said, and with a poof a perfect copy of Naruto was now standing next to him. Okay, get that clone to stand behind me and look at my hand, he said as he put a hand behind his back, and Naruto's clone followed the instruction. Now tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. Naruto's clone looked down at Jiraiya's hand as they both sat eating ice blocks and dispelled. Three, Naruto said after a flash of memories returned to him, wow that was cool, I guess I never noticed during the rush of battle. Now what can you use this to help you with Naruto? Jiraiya asked seriously. Um, training, oh wow, I'm gonna be awesome in no time with the amount of clones I can make. Dadabeo. Hahaha <laughs> calm down kid, it is true that you can accelerate your training, but you need to have something to train at first. Right, so are you going to teach me anything? Naruto asked eagerly. Man is this what it is like to have a clan, to have someone to teach you? It's great. I'm going to catch up to all the others in no time. For now, no, Naruto's heart sank, haha <laughs> get that stupid look off your face kid, of course I'm going to teach you, but for now I want you to work on some basics. What like in the academy? Man not that stuff, Naruto said crestfallen. Naruto let me finish. I want to teach you some basic chakra manipulation, and I want you to practice on your tojutsu, because that is what can be a lifesaver in fights. Of course as you get better I'll teach you more and more, but I also want you teaching yourself. Go to the library when you can and pick up some scrolls. You have a headband now so you can visit the low level restricted section being a graduate of the academy. Go in there and try and find some scrolls on anything about the shinobi art that interests you. You might even find some scrolls on your tojutsu technique. It's great to be versatile and a brawler, it can really throw an opponent off. But there are times when you need the power and precision of a real tojutsu form, got it kid. Hi, Iro Senen. Ahahaha right you little snot, anyway if you keep up training with those clones of yours and keep at it, you'll be great in no time. You have stupid amounts of chakra, use it to your advantage with these clones. Now what I want to teach you today is wall walking. Say what? Wall walking is the when you use chakra manipulation to stick to surfaces, there are other applications for using chakra to stick to things, but most people use it on their feet and hands to stick to walls or stand on water, here like this, Jiraiya explained as stood up and walked over to the nearest tree, walking straight up the side. Wow. That's so cool, if only I knew how to do that when I was painting the Hokage monument. Jiraiya just laughed at that. What you want to do Naruto is focus your chakra to your feet in an even layer and use that to stick to the tree. You have a lot of chakra, so the chakra control won't be as easy for you, but with those clones, you should get it in no time. Now you have a go. Try to do it without using seals to focus your chakra, you'll get a better hang for it that way. Okay, Taj Cage Bunch and No Jutsu, multiple shadow clone Jutsu 100 clones sprang into existence, all with wall walking on their minds. They all sprinted up the nearest unoccupied tree, attempting to use their chakra to stick, while the original just stood and watched. Every single clone fell to the ground, dispelling on impact. The influx of memories dazed the young shinobi a little, not quite used to having 100 memories enter his mind at once, but it didn't deter him from trying again. This time he created only 20 and had each of them run up the tree. They made it slightly further before losing control and falling. Determined to succeed Naruto tried again and again, and within an hour they made it. He had gleaned enough of the technique from the previous waves that all of them were now standing perpendicular to the bark on the trees in the training ground. 
the look on his face was priceless. Jiraiya himself was proud of the kid. El Naruto, I'm going to be teaching you a lot if you learn that fast. Jiraiya said in praise. Am straight Iro Senen, Dadabeo. Ahahaha <laughs> okay you little snot let's get out of here, it's getting late and I've got stuff to do. As they were walking back to Naruto's apartment Jiraiya turned to Naruto, hey kid, I'll be heading away for about a week, so keep up the training and get better with that chakra manipulation. I want you to start using it whenever it's convenient to stick to anything with any part of your body got it. That kind of manipulation can come in very useful in fights. Try a bit of water walking if you feel up to it. It's a more advanced technique that's a little harder. If you manage to do that and all of your other stuff practice your tojutsu while water walking and while walking. In no time you'll be a master of the stuff. Hiro Sen and Naruto was already keen to start his training. He couldn't wait to get down all these new techniques he was going to learn. Okay good, now I'll see you next week back at that training ground, and without so much as a sound Naruto's godfather was gone, and Naruto was left to walk home in silence. After getting up and eating some instant ramen Naruto was about to head out when he heard a knock at the door. Opening it he found once again the Sande Mhokage standing in front of him, a genuine smile on his face as he looked at Naruto. Hey Aji san, Naruto said before the old man could get anything out, you could have told me about my parents, but I guess you didn't know how I'd react. Thanks for introducing me to Iro Senen, as pervy as he is he's a really great guy, he even taught me some cool stuff. That's great Naruto, the relief and happiness spread across his face at how well Naruto was taking everything now, now that you know who your parents are, I think it's about time you moved house. How would you like to live in your parents' old place, it is after all, rightfully yours. I'd love it. Naruto said his eyes lighting up as he rushed out of the house to follow Sirotobi. They walked through the city for some time, heading over to where the major clan compounds were, passing the Achiha, Hayuga, and Nara compounds. They reached the end of a small street, walked through a small gate, and Naruto was granted with an amazing sight. This Naruto is the Namika's compound. It's been deserted since the unfortunate passing of your parents, but now that you know your heritage you are free to live in here. I'm sure there are still belongings sitting in that building ready to be yours, no one has yet been able to get in, but I have a feeling you'll be fine. As for money, your father was a stickler for seals. I guess anything of value is kept in summoning scrolls, and I bet that they'll only open for you. Any food that was in there would be rotten, and it's probably incredibly dusty, so you might want to go shopping. You also might want to think about getting some new clothes, if you want to be taken seriously as a shinobi Naruto, orange might be a great color for grabbing attention, but attention isn't what you want from your enemies. Anyway I'm glad I could finally give you this place, I'll see you around. The Hokage went to leave before turning around, and one more thing, Ejiji. Yeah, Try not to let too many people know your heritage. It may be hard now that you live here, but not many people come around this way, so you should be fine. But why wouldn't I want people to know my dad was the Hokage? they might respect me then. Your father had a lot of enemies Naruto. For now, until you get stronger it would be best if people didn't know. Maybe when you get a gen in team you can tell them, if you really must, but keep the information to yourself for now okay? Okay. The boy smiled, thanks Aji-san, Naruto said, tears coming to his eyes. Looking back to the house for a second before turning back he found the Hokage had already used Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, and was nowhere to be seen, man I need to learn how to use that. The compound wasn't nearly as large as any of the other clan compounds, as there had only been his father and his mother. But it was still beautiful, if a little overgrown. There was a main building in the center of the rectangular compound that was three stories tall, it was ringed by balconies on each floor and had a pointed shingled roof. Being the only building in the compound Naruto assumed that this would now be his house, the house that his parents had lived in. What amazed him though was the surrounding woodland. The compound wasn't huge by any means, but with the house being only building the amount of woodland that surrounded it was awesome. There were gardens and ponds, trees and hedges, everything was overgrown, but it was still great. There were even dirt areas that were now covered in weeds that were obviously training grounds with their wooden dummies having fallen apart. It needed a lot of work, but that's what shadow clones were for, he didn't envy his copies. He walked up to the main entrance and tried to get inside. The door wouldn't budge. There didn't seem to be any obvious way to get in. Well this is great, why would Aji Sen give me a house I can't get into? As he turned around and sat down on the ground to think he let his head fall back and hit the door. A thin cloud of dust fell from the painted surface. Looking up he could see what appeared to be the faint outline of a seal underneath the dust on the door. He walked up to it and did the only thing he could think of. He applied a small amount of chakra to the seal. It flashed and the door swung open. There were a ton of rooms in the house and he could just imagine what it would be like living here all his life. The thought brought tears to his eyes as he thought about the life that could have been had the attack on Kanoha never come. Naruto explored the first floor. The house was large, but it didn't feel too big or empty. 
It did however feel old, but Naruto just put that down to the extreme amount of dust. The first floor contained a main living area, dining room, kitchen and bathroom. Most of the floor was dominated by the living area that joined straight onto the kitchen. The dining room was tucked away, and although still large looked like it was only used for special occasions. The second floor had a few rooms, a study, armory, bathroom and a guest bedroom. The two most noticeable rooms were the study and the small armory. The armory was no doubt small because of his father's notable use of seals, and he likely stored his equipment in the numerous scrolls his father had stored in a chest sitting flush against the far wall. Naruto tried opening a scroll, but it was sealed shut. He couldn't even unroll one of them. They had the strange seal that was on the front door sitting on the seam of the scroll. Applying a small amount chakra to the seal, it flashed, and the scroll unlocked. Opening it up, it had a number of storage arrays on it. Each had a different word written underneath, whether it was shuriken, kunai, Horation, or a number of others. He didn't know what a Horation was, but he'd look into that later. For now he placed his hand on the shuriken one and channeled a small amount of chakra again. In a puff of smoke, a small pile of shuriken appeared on the scroll in front of him, all in perfect condition. I guess things don't rust in a storage scroll, this is great, I have my own freaking arsenal. Dadabeo. I can go through all of this stuff later, I should keep exploring the house. Naruto went into the study to find an extravagant room with a large desk, no doubt used by his father when writing out seals. There was an ink pot filled with dry ink and a few brushes. The walls of the room were covered in bookshelves with each and every one of them covered in books. They were dusty, but over the years no one had stolen them, they couldn't have, and they didn't look damaged. Naruto ran a finger over a few books as they sat on the shelf. Maybe I can learn some new techniques from my parents' collections. He'd have a look later, or rather he'd get some clones to go through them. Excited to finish exploring the house Naruto continued up to the final floor. He went through a number of rooms, mainly a bunch of bedrooms. He opened one door and couldn't help but fall to the floor as he went weak in the knees. It was his room. It had been set up as a nursery. All Naruto could do was sit and cry as he thought about the life he could have had in this room, the memories that might have been. He got up after a while, he didn't know how long had passed, and walked over to the crib, his crib. The crib his parents had made for him and the room that his parents had made for him, it was perfect. It was all he could do not to break down again as he stood there looking around that room. After a time standing and looking out the window that looked onto the beautiful yet currently overgrown grounds he turned and left, closing the door on the life he never had. The final room was one that he figured was the master bedroom, it also had a massive seal in the center of it, and he pulsed some of his chakra through it in order to open the door. Inside was a massive room, with a giant four-poster against the wall opposite the door. It was a gorgeous bed, hell the whole room looked magnificent. In the center of the room was a giant rug over a hardwood floor, two small dressers sat on each side of the bed, and over on the left side of the room was what looked to be a walk-in wardrobe. An ensuite opened onto both the bedroom and the wardrobe, while a large couch, coffee table and another bookshelf sat to the right of the bed, before doors opened onto the balcony. Naruto walked over to the dresser and saw something that sent pangs of pain through his chest once again. There was a picture of his father and mother. His mother was clearly pregnant, and they were both smiling happily at whoever was taking the photo, his father with his hand on his mother's stomach. He couldn't stay angry at his father. All the resentment melted away, after seeing this house, his room, and now this photo, Naruto knew what kind of man his father was. The fact that he had to seal the Kaiubi into Naruto to save the village, obviously meant it was a last resort, and even though Naruto had suffered for it, he couldn't stay angry, not at this man, smiling so happily in this photo of his family. As Naruto sat down on the bed and stared at the beautiful picture of his parents, a single tear fell from his face and landed on the photo. I'll make you proud mum and dad. Wherever you are, I'll make you proud. Chapter 2. Minato's Legacy, Namika's clan building, Naruto's home, Kinoha. After sitting for a while to pull himself together Naruto got up and walked over to the wardrobe. He looked through the clothing only to find that not only was everything too big for him, but everything was starting to get holes in it. Looks like I'll have to go and buy some clothes. There was a chest in the wardrobe that contained a number of scrolls. Maybe they contained some clothes, better yet, some money would be nice. Upon unsealing one scroll he found it to contain a number of storage arrays, each with a different number underneath. Naruto activated the one with 100 written on it, and his jaw dropped. He'd never seen so much money in his life. Sitting in front of him, for his own use, was 100,000 Ryo. That wasn't even the half of it though. There were even larger numbers written on the array. He could only imagine how much money his father earned as an s rank shinobi in the Hokage. Thus he'd have no trouble going shopping now. Picking up 10,000 Ryo and sealing away the rest Naruto made his way downstairs. Standing on the doorstep of his new home Naruto created 200 clones. Alright guys listen up, we've got a lot of work to do today, so here's the plan. 
I need 20 of you to go and sift through the books in the library, I need you to find out what useful information is hidden in those books got it. 10 of you should go through the scrolls in the armory and take an inventory, I need to know exactly what I have. 40 of you go and find a pond, get to work on practicing water walking. Another 30 get to working on cleaning this house, I want 10 to a floor. Use the top half of your jumpsuits as rags if you have to. The rest of you get to work on weeding that training ground. When you finish go start tidying up around the place. Anyone who finishes their job before I get back goes and practices water walking. When you've water walked for 5 minutes straight without falling and you can dispel, got it everyone. Got it. His clones chorused back to him and they ran off to do their respective duties. With that sorted Naruto began making his way into the shopping district of town. He had money, now all he needed was a shop that wouldn't kick him out on sight. There were all sorts of shops open at this time of the day, flower shops, clothing shops, weapons shops, shops that sold all sorts of bits and pieces. He didn't know which one he'd try first. All he knew was that whatever he did, at the end of the day, Raymond was on the menu. The first shop that he knew sold ninja gear he had no luck with. He hadn't taken more than two steps when the owner shouted at him to leave, calling him a nuisance. I'll show him who's a nuisance Naruto thought to himself as he walked down the street to another shop. The banner over the top of the door read Makoto Shinobi Supplies. Well this looks like as good a place as any I guess Naruto thought, hoping this time to not get kicked out straight away. The man standing behind the counter was of an average height and build with brown hair that was beginning to gray and friendly brown eyes. He was wearing a black coat over what looked to be a smith's apron and a plain brown jumpsuit. The man knew who the small boy was that walked through the front door. Everyone in the village did. But there was something different about him today, he was carrying himself with much more confidence than usual, real confidence, not the false confidence everybody was so used to. He knew he'd get no trouble from the kid who was no stranger to being treated badly. Hey kid, what can I do for you today? Hideki asked, before the boy could get too lost in his shop. Well I was looking to get some clothes actually. I think I have most of the other supplies I need for now, but I'm in sorry need of a new wardrobe, I can't keep wearing this orange jumpsuit if I want people to take me seriously can I? At that they both chuckled. No you can't, and I'm sure I can set you up with a new wardrobe, now come with me, and we'll get you fitted. Wow. He didn't kick me out straight away, this is great. My name is Hideki Makoto, what's yours? He asked out of politeness. Well my name is Naruto Uzumaki, this is a nice shop you have, do you make all the tools and weapons? Naruto said, making sure not to reveal who his father was just yet. He'd also noticed the man had a blacksmith's apron on with tools hanging out. Ahaha, well spotted. Yes most of these tools I make myself, some of the more expensive and hard to get items I've found are imported. Cool. Naruto said smiling at the friendly shopkeep, I'll be sure to stop by whenever I need some more supplies then. Ahahaha you do that kid. At least someone is friendly around here. By the time they had finished shopping Naruto had a brand new kit. Instead of his blue sandals he now wore black boots that came up to just below the top of his shins. Replacing his orange jumpsuit, he wore a pair of black cargo pants with a number of pockets running down the sides, a mesh undershirt and a long-sleeved dark blue top. As he was fiddling with his hit eye he noticed something out of the corner of his eye. Walking over to it he found an overcoat that had a number of pockets in it. It was the same style as the one he'd seen his father wearing in the photo, with short sleeves and only coming down to just past his knees. Instead of being white with flames however this one was a dark red, almost the color of his mother's hair from what the picture had shown. He picked it up and walked everything back over to the counter with Hideki. Not only did he buy that outfit, but he made sure to buy some extras, so he didn't have to don his jumpsuit again. As much as he loved it, he had to admit it was impractical. He asked Hideki for some spare blue cloth, attaching it to his hit eye as he tied it around his waist, closing the overcoat. He let his goggles hang around his neck. He had decided to keep them because they were incredibly practical, a shinobi couldn't fight if he had dust or gas in his eyes. This is a lot of stuff Naruto, Hideki said as he counted through all the items of clothing, are you sure you have enough money kid? I can give you a slight discount, but I'm not sure if it'll be enough. Ha 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 how much will it be Hideki-san? Naruto asked politely, reaching into one of the pockets of his new outfit. With all these spare clothes and that coat it comes to 6000 Ryo. Well it was only to be expected, I did kind of buy a lot of high quality clothing, here you go, Naruto said with a smile as he handed over the money and snatched up all the clothes. Hideki was surprised that the kid was willing to hand over that much cash so easily. Wait, Naruto, take this, it'll save you carrying everything. Hideki said as he handed Naruto a storage scroll, watching as the young man sealed in his new hall. Arigato Hideki-san. Naruto said as he waved over his shoulder at the kind shopkeeper as he left. Who was that Chichi? A pretty girl with black hair and buns and beautiful brown, almost black eyes asked from the back door of the shop. 
that was Yuzumaki Naruto Tenten, it looks like he's finally getting his act together. Hideki added under his breath with a smile. From the looks of it he just graduated, you guys might end up training together sometime. Next time he comes in say hello. Hideki said cheerfully. Yeah, maybe, Tenten replied before turning and heading back into the workshop. Naruto felt like a new man strolling through the street. Even the people hardly recognized him. His orange jumpsuit that was once his main identifier now gone, the only thing people had to go by was the blonde hair, the whisker marks and the massive grin. He felt confident, like he could do anything. And that's exactly what he was going to do. They had been told that in a month they would be sorted into genin teams, so Naruto had a month to prepare. A month in which with his clone technique he'd be able to make up any lost ground and then some. He was going to be Hokage, and with his drive and the teachings of Jiraiya he was sure he would make it. He quickly stopped by a grocer's to pick up some food, storing them in the scroll, so he didn't have to carry anything, and headed out to get some food. He was sitting at Ichiraku Raymond downing his favorite meal, after having been complimented by AM on his new attire, when memories started flooding back to him. Memories of clones standing for five minutes on the surface of a pond, memories of the sheer number and variety of shinobi weapons he now had available, and the amount of knowledge stored in his father's study. There were handwritten scrolls on ceiling, covered in notes and diagrams, no doubt written by one of his parents. There were technique scrolls that his father must have collected over time. The whole place was a treasure trove of information. He quickly finished his Raymond, paid, and thanked Tucci and AM for the delicious meal. Heading home to begin diving through what his parents had left him, he began sprinting through the streets as fast as he could. On the way back he stopped by his old place to pick up any spare clothes that he might need, like pajamas and a few cups of his instant ramen. Heading back to his new place, he stopped, looking up at his home. In the few hours that we was gone his clones had really gotten to work. The forest was still overgrown, but that would provide a challenge. The training field had been weeded and they'd even fixed up some of the training dummies as best they could. The outside of the house was now clean again, and all the cobwebs were nowhere to be found. There were no more clones over at the pond, all of them having dispelled themselves after five minutes of standing on the water. He went inside and was amazed at the transformation. Ami I'm good, he thought to himself, well my clones are anyway. The place was now spotless. He went into the kitchen and packed all his groceries away before heading upstairs to the library. A number of his clones were still sifting through the sheer number of scrolls and books that were in the room. Dear boss, we found this really interesting scroll, one of his clones said to him as he passed him an unlocked scroll, it had that strange chakra seal on it, so we thought it was important. After having seen the scroll of forbidden techniques, Naruto knew what a technique scroll was when he saw one. This looked like the initial design though. Maybe it was one that his father had invented. Naruto looked to the top of the scroll and saw the words Horation no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God Technique. Am I wonder what it does. He didn't have any information from his clones yet because he gave them the task of sorting what scrolls and books were what. They hadn't actually read too much into them. But as he scanned down the scroll, looking over the scratchings and brush sticks that littered the page, his eyes widened to the size of dinner plates. No way, he said under his breath, no freaking way, a space-time ninjutsu. Detailed on the scroll in front of him were the design steps and workings, described in intricate detail, of a teleportation jutsu. It looked incredibly complicated, but he needed to try and learn it. He had to work it out, and with the help of his clones, he would. The technique spoke of using seals as markers for the technique, and that the user could teleport to any seal at will, once they knew how to control the technique. I guess that'd be the hard part, not overshooting the marker and ending trapped inside an object. The seals could be on anything. There was even a section detailing how to attach a seal to an opponent mid-combat. It also detailed that special Horatian kunai could also be used. Boy was Naruto glad that his father wrote down everything when working. This was amazing, Naruto had in his hands the workings to an amazing jutsu, he doubted anyone else even knew about this scroll, else they would have tried to get their hands on it. Walking into the armory, Naruto could see a number of clones still sorting through the arsenal contained within the scrolls. He walked over to a funny-looking pile of kunai. So these must be those special kunai, I can see where the seal is. Most of the kunai still had the seals written on them. He looked at the complex seal and whistled. He had no understanding of what any of it meant. If it weren't for the writings in the other room, he wouldn't have even known what the kunai was used for. He had a lot of reading to catch up on. He guessed that with just this kunai and all the sealing readings, minus the scroll his father had written, it still would have taken him decades to understand and execute the jutsu. Man he really needed to read up on jutsu theory if he was going to become a master shinobi. And Kami you like to write while working chichi. Over the next week Naruto left a number of clones in his library, reading up on everything they could about seals, sealing and the Horatian jutsu. He also had a few others scouring for any scrolls on tojutsu technique and other ninjutsu. All the while Naruto was conditioning himself. 
whenever he wasn't running laps around the compound or doing strength exercises, he was brawling a number of his clones while standing on the water or fighting upside down under a tree branch. Every time he cleared a wave, another would come at him. While he was brawling one group, he had other groups spread out all over the compound, all fighting in a free-for-all. There were always a number of clones set aside throwing shuriken, kunai and Horatian kunai at the practice dummies. When he started to see that his lap times of the compound weren't improving as fast as they used it, he started to weigh himself down with rocks and did the run carrying a small boulder. Needless to say his times dropped. But they slowly came back up. With his incredible recovery times, nearly limitless chakra, and hundreds of clones he was progressing faster than he ever thought possible. He did make a note that carrying boulders was a pain and that he needed to work out how to put a weight seal on his coat. On the final day before Jiraiya was set to return he decided to try his father's technique. He figured that he had enough of an understanding after poring over the scroll and the scrolls on seals and sealing in the library that he could attempt the jutsu. By no means did he have a masterful understanding of the technique or sealing, but you had to run before you could walk right. He still had clones going through the library, he didn't think that it'd stop until every last drop of knowledge had been obtained from the place, but today he was outside creating clones to attempt the technique. He had 10 clones all attempting to teleport to a separate kunai. He spent the entire day following the instructions on the scroll, and it wasn't pretty. Naruto could already see the dangers of the technique, and that's why he was having clones perform it for practice. Many of them ended up teleporting into the ground, trees, some even ended up falling from the sky to their deaths. This technique required precise chakra control. Something that Naruto was still working on. As the sun began to set he wasn't at the point where he could teleport to Akuna yet. He was getting there, but the clones were still getting dispelled from failed attempts. He wouldn't try it himself until he knew for sure he could do it perfectly. He was surprised his dad managed to work it out and then perform it. What if he died attempting it for the first time? His already massive respect for his father skyrocketed after attempting this technique, even with his understanding from the scroll and the numerous shadow clones he couldn't get it quite right. He also still wasn't sure how he was going to attach seals to enemies when in combat. The scroll mentioned something about creating flexible seals out of chakra that would stick to enemies, but Naruto still didn't have much of an idea of what to do. He had so much more to learn, but for now he wanted to get down teleporting to a kunai. And so he trained into the night, generating clone after clone, as they all made more refined attempts at teleporting to a kunai. It was just after midnight when he succeeded. First it was one clone in a wave that succeeded. The next had five. It wasn't long before every single wave of clones was succeeding. It was time for the original to have a shot. He focused his chakra and intent on the kunai acting as a beacon to the location he wanted to teleport to and perform the necessary internal chakra manipulations detailed in the scroll. Next thing he realized he was standing right next to the kunai, the feeling of sickness his clones had experienced through his clones washed over him. He figured that he'd be used to the technique in no time, and the sickening feeling would lessen to nothing over time. Another hour later and he was able to teleport to a moving kunai. Good I'm improving faster now. But there was something else he needed to get a handle on before he faced off against Jiraiya and earned himself that secret technique. He trained all through the night. If Naruto could say so himself he'd had a rather productive week. The sun rose as he finished his training, and he walked to the training ground where he would meet Jiraiya, a little sleep-deprived but smiling and ready for the challenge. Jiraiya found the kid at the training ground where he had revealed the identity of his parents, taking a nap under the tree they sat under the first time. Jiraiya walked over silently and went to kick Naruto awake, only to have the boy snap his eyes open and punch Jiraiya's foot into the ground. Boy that hurt you little shit, he said before smiling, how'd you know I was coming? Clones, he said as a number of clones all dropped from surrounding trees all at once. Jeez man you're losing your touch. The Araido kid, nice outfit by the way. The orange jumpsuit wasn't very shinobi-like. What and yours isn't. I'm allowed to be extravagant, shinobi no to run from Jiraiya of the Sanin. Ah okay, well how about you teach me that technique today. You haven't hit me yet kid. Well let's have another spari rosenin. Or are you afraid? Bring it on brat, he said as he jumped back and into a defensive stance, it's only been a week, what makes you think you can hit me now? Let's just say I've learned a few new tricks, Naruto replied with a smirk. Naruto sprung up from his position under the tree and threw three regular kunai at the Sanin, his accuracy greatly increased from last time, Jiraiya was forced to dodge them or deflect them with his own kunai. He deflected them. Good. Naruto created six clones that charged his godfather, three from either side. The kid's faster, but what makes him think he can win? As he turned to fight the second batch of clones after abruptly dispatching the first he noticed three more kunai flying at him, he turned just in time to deal with them, but noticed something extremely strange as he dodged two and went to deflect a third with a kunai in his right hand. That's a Horatian kunai, how'd he get one of them? 
does he even know what they are Famu Oshayad. Naruto had materialized from just below the kunai at the moment Jiraiya went to deflect it and grabbed it with his left hand. In his right hand was a glowing ball of energy that Jiraiya knew all too well. Naruto was now inside his guard with Jiraiya's right hand up and crossed over his body from the act of deflection. Before Naruto could make any more ground against him, Jiraiya lashed out with a weak right knee from an unstable stance to get himself some breathing room. The kid stumbled back at the hit but recovered almost straight away as Jiraiya backpedaled while going through a quick series of hand seals. How the hell did he manage to do that? It doesn't matter, all that matters is I now have to deal with him being able to teleport. And if I can't keep up I'm going to eat a Rasengan. Kami Minato, your son is crazy. I'm coming for you Iro Senen, Naruto shouted confidently before creating another six clones. Jiraiya stopped and slammed his palm onto the ground in response, and a cloud of smoke enshrouded him. When the smoke cleared, all Naruto could do was stand there with eyes wide. Jiraiya was now standing atop a massive toad. What do you want Jiraiya, the grouchy toad asked. We need to show this kid who's boss Gamabunta. You need my help to fight a kid. The toad laughed, man next time you call me for a joke at least have some sake ready for me, ha. Huh? And with that the toad disappeared in a puff of smoke. What? Hey. For Kami's sake, Jiraiya screamed as Naruto again charged him after that strange encounter with a massive toad. As Naruto and the clones were running they all threw a single horation. Jiraiya flashed hand seals in response Hari Jism, Needle Jizo, Hari Jigoku, Needle Hell, he shouted, completing his jutsu and showering all of the clones and the original with deadly senbon, created from his hair defense. Before Naruto took any damage from the flying needles, all of which stopped his kunai in their tracks, he threw a kunai out to the side teleporting to it and catching it as it flew, saving him from the deadly barrage. This time Jiraiya was on the offensive. He charged Naruto with incredible speed, but before his attack could hit Naruto was already gone, teleporting to the one kunai that remained on the ground from the previous attack, the others having been dispelled after his clones popped out of existence. Picking up the kunai he teleported to he threw it at Jiraiya as he turned to resume his attack. Jiraiya tried to deflect it, this time wary of where Naruto might appear. A kunai flew out of a bush, thrown by a clone Naruto had planted earlier, right at Jiraiya's blind spot. While Naruto forward and threw another kunai from a different angle. Jiraiya turned, just managing to deflect the kunai thrown from the bush's right hand, while also deflecting the other two with his left hand. But it was enough. Naruto had three kunai now flying past Jiraiya in three different directions. He teleported to the first and got right up in Jiraiya's face as Jiraiya made to counter, only to teleport to the third as it made its way past Jiraiya's side. Naruto's Rasengan collided solidly with the side of Jiraiya's head after the encounter that lasted less than a minute until Jiraiya burst into a puff of smoke. Well done kid, I never would have expected you to take out my clone, even if he was slightly handicapped. Jiraiya said walking out from the tree line, making sure not to praise the kid too much for what were amazing feats for any shinobi. So I hit your clone, does that mean you'll teach me a new technique? Naruto asked after the rather exciting fight. I managed to hit him. Even if it was a clone. Man this is what happens when you train. Everyone in my grade is going to be so jealous of my cool techniques. Jiraiya could see the cogs ticking behind the kid's blue eyes, don't let these new techniques go to your head okay? Arrogance will get you killed. Never ever underestimate an enemy. I learned that the hard way today sheesh, but who would have thought he'd have learned both of Minato's techniques in a week? If you managed to hit my clone I was going to teach you the Rasengan, but apparently you've already learned that. How did you learn those techniques anyway? They were your father's bread and butter, he invented them himself. After you left, Aji san took me to my parents' house. He told me no one had been inside because they couldn't get in or something. I guess it has to do with me being a blood relative that I could unlock the seals and get in. Inside there were a bunch of scrolls and stuff and I've been reading my dad's library. Two of the scrolls contained those moves. Not like official scrolls or anything, but it made it easier to learn because my dad had all these notes from when he was designing them, so I learned them too. I still haven't mastered them yet. All I know how to do is teleport to a kunai, and my Rasengan could use a bit of work to get it at full power. But still, the fact that without anything but your father's notes you were able to execute those moves. It's amazing. I can't tell the kid that though, it'd go to his head. Instead of teaching you the Rasengan I'm going to sign you up with a summoning contract okay? You mean so I can summon toads? Yup, Jiraiya replied with a small nod as he summoned the huge contract scroll and unrolled it, sign here. How? I don't have anything to sign it with. You sign it, Jiraiya said pausing and leaning in with an evil smile, and blue odd. Ah. Ahahaha, <laughs> Jiraiya couldn't help but laugh at the kid's reaction, kid I'm only joking, but just prick your finger and sign your name, then put down each of your fingerprints. Okay, Naruto said, following the instructions of his sensei godfather. Now you have a contract with the toads. 
By performing these seals then slamming the ground, Jiraiya said showing Naruto the correct seals and channeling enough chakra you can summon a toad. Cool. Will I be able to summon that big Gamabunta guy? Maybe, you might want to make friends with the smaller guys first, Gamabunta can be pretty grouchy. Yeah I noticed. Anyway Naruto, I'll see you later, I might swing by your place if you're home, but I need to go talk to the Hokage. Got it, see you around. Naruto said as he went and picked up any Horatian kunai that were lying around the battlefield and teleported home. You should have seen him Saratobi, for a second I thought it was Minato back from the dead, Jiraiya said to the wizened Hokage. Don't worry Jiraiya, I was watching, I couldn't believe my eyes either. I take it he found more than just some dusty old books in that house. For all our safety including the boys I need you to go over there later and tell him to seal those scrolls away or hide them whenever he isn't using them. If they somehow manage to get into the wrong hands the safety of the village will never be secure. I understand. Man I never thought the kid would progress this fast. It's crazy. His father's intellect, with all that chakra and such a drive to succeed, the speed at which he's going to move up the ranks if he continues at this rate will be phenomenal. Have you given any thought as to what team he'll be on? I figure it's only fair that the student teaches the son don't you think? It's almost poetic. You're right, that and Kakashi will shit a brick when he sees Naruto use that technique, oh Kami, I want to be there to see the look on his face. The haha calm down Jiraiya, anyway the selections aren't for a while. The gen and themselves don't find out for another three weeks. But yes I believe Kakashi will be in for quite the surprise. Yes he will. I wonder what the brat manages to come up with in the next few weeks. Anyway I'll see you later sensei, Jiraiya said to his old teacher and friend as he jumped out the window of his office. The boy's already making waves. And to think all he needed was a little push in the right direction from his godfather. Before we know it he'll have made a name for himself, Hiruzen muttered to himself as he looked out over the village and the sun began to set. Hey kid open up. Jiraiya stood knocking on the front door of the Namika's compound's one and only building. Oh hey Iro Senen. I'm coming, Naruto yelled back from what sounded like the second floor. Within a second the door was opening. Don't tell me you just teleported to the front door. You're using such a high level technique for that. If he was to be honest with himself, if he could do that he probably would too, but the kid didn't need to know that. Why not? Gets me more practice, that and it's so cool. Anyway come in, Jiraiya followed him inside and sat down in the living room. About the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique, whatever scroll you used to learn it you have to hide or lock away in whatever you can. Don't let anyone know that you have it. Same goes for the Rasengan. They are both extremely powerful techniques and if they fell into the wrong hands it would put everyone in danger, got it. Yeah, I figured as much, whenever I'm not using them I keep the scrolls locked and then locked in a chest. And by locked I mean locked with a special barrier seal my dad put on a few things in the house. He even put it on the house. It's pretty cool. I was reading up on some notes about it. Apparently it only opens for the chakra of the creator or anyone the creator of the jutsu adds into the seal. Did you ever try to get an Iro Senen? I think you would have been allowed in. I don't think Aji San wanted to come in either. You guys are the only two people I can think of that my dad would have added to the list. I figure I could get in because of the similarities between my chakra and my parents. But I'm only guessing here. Ha ah, that sounds like a seal your dad would come up with. Would explain why this place hasn't been touched in so long. Yeah the best part is I can reseal it by channeling chakra into the seal again. The ultimate lock, it's pretty ingenious. I think the scrolls are pretty safe, but I'll take extra good care of them just to be sure. Okay good kid, anyway I just wanted to stop by and say hello, let you know what the go with those scrolls were, not sure when I'll see you next kid, I have to head out of town again, but I'll visit when I get back. And when you do I'll land a punch on the real you, Naruto said, determined to show Jiraiya that he meant business. Aha and your dreams brat, maybe a couple of years down the line. Not anytime soon though. Over the next few weeks Naruto spent his time training. Every minute of every day was devoted to furthering himself in the ninja arts. He focused on absolutely everything, from improved to jutsu, to the subtle arts of the shinobi, even mind games and strategy, courtesy of his next to unlimited chakra and his ability to make clones. He worked on chakra control and ninjutsu, even few ninjutsu, to help better understand seals and the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique. Naruto also found documentation of some ninjutsu his mother used and went to work on replicating those. All the while his clones were learning and practicing techniques, styles and caricatures, the original Naruto was training physically. It did him no good if he could launch a kunai accurately and teleport to it if he didn't have the speed and power to do anything about it once he was in range. While studying few ninjutsu he soon came to grasping the basics and began creating simple explosive tags with special paper he purchased from Makoto's shop. It wasn't long after that that he finally worked out how to apply a weight seal to a piece of clothing. 
he managed to design a simple seal using his knowledge that would add 10 kilograms to a piece of clothing. By channeling Chakra into the seal he could turn off the weight in case he needed to fight or train unhindered. Channeling Chakra into the seal would resume the weight. After he worked the kinks out of this he quickly went and bought arm guards, which he applied a seal each to. He also applied three seals to the back of his coat in a triangular pattern. About a week before it was time to be assigned a team all of Naruto's training was going well, and he was walking home from Makoto's for a change. He had been shopping at Makoto's for a bladed weapon that he might specialize in. He couldn't rely on just kunai and Horatian kunai if he came up against a real swordsman, so he went shopping for a more adequate blade. He left the shop with a katana-like blade that was 40 centimeters in length. One might even call it an oversized tanto. It was small enough that he could wear it sideways on his lower back, drawing it without issue, but large enough that he could do some serious damage up close, if he was to be precise. After just turning the corner of the street in which the shop was located, he heard someone calling his name. Naruto. Wait up. A girl with pretty brown, almost black eyes and her hair and buns called out as she ran up to stop in front of him, have you ever used one of those before? Um, no. But it shouldn't be too hard right? Who are you anyway? Oh I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself, she said, I'm Tenten Makoto, and I'm sure you'll be a natural, but I was wondering if you maybe wanted to train a bit. I've got the day off from training with my team, and it's always better to train with someone else. Naruto's training method could attest to that statement any day of the week. Sure. I don't really train with anybody but myself usually, it'd be nice to have some company. You can show me how to use this thing. Come on we can train at my place. They trained for the rest of the day, Tenten going over the basics of using a bladed weapon the likes of which Naruto had purchased. She was glad he was a natural learner, there wasn't much she had to repeat. She never asked much about his parents, and he never saw a reason to tell, they just trained away in the Namika's compound grounds. So do you want to spar? Naruto asked as the day came to a close. Ahaha you're a fast learner Naruto, but you're fresh out of the academy. I've been a genin for a while, maybe when you get better. She replied, now Naruto was the one to laugh. Ahahaha you've been teaching me technique with a new weapon all day. You haven't seen anything from me that would indicate how well I could fight yet, he said as he dashed up to stand in front of her, showing remarkable speed for his age. Wow, well I will say you're quick for your age, but if that's it, you've got another thing coming. She said with a smile as she slipped into a ready fighting stance. Oh I haven't even gotten started yet sister. He said disabling his weight seals and disappearing in a blur. She lost sight of him as he disappeared into the woods. How about I take it easy on you? I'll only use one ninjutsu, how's that? His voice echoed from the woodland eerily, sending shivers down Tenten's spine, just who was this kid? Your funeral Naruto. Tenten said as she unfurled a massive scroll and launched from it a large number of kunai and shuriken towards the tree line. Blows, but no cigar. The RRRR, come out and fight, Tenten yelled at the evasive shinobi. If that's really what you want, then remember that you asked for it. But that 50 Naruto's came sprinting down out of the trees across the training grounds at Tenten, all of them brandishing the Tanto in their right hands and a regular kunai in the left. Tenten's eyes went wide at the sheer number of clones a graduate created and the speed at which they were moving across the field, she had trouble keeping up with them all. Quickly surrounding herself with another scroll, she released a large number of projectiles to hang in the air and expertly threw them at each of the charging clones. Within seconds of the last clone being taken down a wave of kunai were launched at her from the tree line, while another wave of clones charged at her. Dodging each of the kunai she proceeded to take down the clones, showing great skill and accuracy with throwing bladed weapons. When the last clone was finally dispelled she could heard a hissing noise. The handles of some of the kunai were wrapped in an explosive tag. Her eyes widened in shock. Who was this kid and how did he expect her to be able to survive this? Not every kunai was explosive, but there were still a large number scattered around the ground, and she was standing in the middle of them. There was no way she could make it to the edge of the field, but she'd be damned if she didn't try to get as far away from the center as possible. She ran, her legs pumping, trying her hardest to get herself to safety. She heard the explosion, but for some strange reason she didn't feel the heat of the blast or the pain that she was expecting. Instead she found herself sitting on a couch inside a rather comfortable and well-lit living room. Well that was fun, Naruto said with a grin on his face as he got up and walked into the kitchen, do you want something to eat or drink? You nearly killed me, what were you thinking? She cried in outrage. What I was thinking was that you would be perfectly fine. As you can see I had the situation under control. Yeah how? I thought I was a goner. Well I waited to see if you had a counter to my explosive plan of attack, and when you turned and ran I assumed that you didn't. When I knew you wouldn't make it out by yourself I rescued you. But how did you move so fast? How did you save me? That is something that I let you ponder on. A magician never reveals his tricks. 
I will say I used a jutsu, so technically I used two jutsu that fight, but considering I only used one to save you from my own attack, it was only fair. Now would you like anything? Over the following week, Tenten would come around to train and have light sparring sessions with Naruto whenever she got time away from the shop and her team. As cryptic as he had been about rescuing her from his rather excessive attack, he was a nice guy, talented as far as any shinobi their age went, and he didn't look half bad in that outfit of his. She thought his whisker marks were pretty cute too. Naruto made sure not to use the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique, around Tenten, just to vex her and keep her wondering exactly what it was that he did to get her out of the explosive situation. Before long it was time for team assignment. Naruto got dressed in his usual, weight seals and all. Since his first encounter with Tenten, he'd up the weights by another 10 kilograms, so he was now carrying an extra 60 kilograms of weight. He'd rearranged the distribution though. Naruto was now carrying 10 kilograms on each limb, one on his chest and one on his back in the middle of his coat. Not only did he now look more intimidating, he thought, but the weight was well distributed across his body. From the looks of it he'd beaten half the graduates as he sat down in an empty seat in the half-empty room. Looking around he could see Akamichi Chouji snacking on a bag of chips, Ino Yamanaka who was looking around anxiously, no doubt waiting for the infamous Acha Sasuke. He could also see Inuzuka Kiba with his Ninkan Akamaru and Nara Shikamaru feigning sleep. Hayuga Hinata was sitting meekly in the corner, and it was not lost on him that she was flashing looks at him whenever she thought he wasn't paying attention. That was about it at the time. Some of the others were chucking glances at him, obviously because of his new look and because he'd grown. Courtesy of being able to afford food other than instant ramen, don't get him wrong though, he still loved the stuff. It's just that Naruto did understand the importance of nutrition, and there were even a few cookbooks in the pantry, so Naruto had improved his diet, resulting in a surprising growth spurt, along with a significant amount of muscle definition for his age. That'd be the non-stop training and conditioning he was putting himself through, not that they could see his muscles through his shirt, well maybe the Hayuga could, he noted. Naruto sat in quiet, analyzing each and every one of them as they waited, and it seemed that Shikamaru was the only one that noticed, giving a slight nod as Naruto's eyes passed across him. It wasn't long before the classroom began to fill up and the Jounin strolled in. There was the usual fight between Sakura and Ino about who was going sit next to Sasuke until one of the Jounin stepped up and told everyone to sit down and shut up. His command was obliged almost instantaneously. Each of the respective Jounin stepped up to announce their teams. Team 7 is Ichiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Yuzumaki Naruto, a tall man with spiky white hair, a face mask and a hit eye covering his left eye said, meet me on top of the academy in an hour, and with that he strolled out of the room. Sakura's reaction was initially glee at having been put with Sasuke. But that lasted all of two seconds before she found out that her other partner was Naruto. She needn't be worried though. Over the past month training, the time spent talking with Yureya whenever he was around and the past week spent with Tenten, Sakura had no need to worry about Naruto harassing her with date requests. When he originally told Yureya about his problem with his crush the man laughed. Naruto, maybe she'll change her tune down the line, but if she's so interested in the Sasuke guy, you are telling me about that she won't pay attention at all to how you feel then leave her. Focus on your training, focus on your path to greatness. She'll wake up and notice what she is missing out on or she won't. But don't let it consume you, and don't let it get you down. Naruto had come to terms with this, and even though it still hurt a little bit he was right to let it go. He enjoyed his time with Tenten more anyway, and she was just his training partner. At least she talked to him. The remaining teams to be assigned were Team 8 and Team 9 and Team 10. Team 8 consisted of Aburam Shino, Hayuga Hinata, and Inuzuka Kiba and his dog Akamaru, they were led by Kurina Yuhi. Team 10 was led by the son of the Hokage, Saratobi Asuma, and consisted of the Ino Shikacho trio, a combination Naruto had read about over the past month. The legendary combination their three clans had come up with was mentioned a lot in Konoha history. After Asuma had left the room they all sat not knowing what to do. They all had an hour before they had to meet their respective Jounin sensei, and it was around lunchtime. Well I don't know about you guys, but I'm hungry, who's keen for some ramen? Naruto said as he stood up and stretched, having been sitting there for a while. The obvious few were against hanging out with the dead last of the class, namely Sasuke, Sakura, and Ino. But when Chaoji and Shikamaru both agreed to join up for lunch, a few more people got up to leave with the group, Hinata included. As they were leaving Shikamaru turned to Naruto. So what changed all of a sudden? It's only been a month and you've changed your look, but I can tell you've changed more than that. Let's just say I found out a few things and I got a lot more serious about being a shinobi. I'm that much closer to becoming Hokage now, Dadabeo. There were go, same old Naruto, Chaoji said as they all laughed and left for lunch. An hour later Naruto arrived on the rooftop to find Sakura and Sasuke sitting there in silence. Sakura kept casting nervous glances at Sasuke. 
neither of them noticed that he was there until he sat down between the two, but before Sakura could protest Kakashi arrived in a swirl of leaves. Nice intimidation trick sensei. So I guess you three are going to my squad from now on huh? Well how about we introduce ourselves, maybe share some likes, dislikes, hobbies. Okay well how about you go first then Kakashi sensei, Sakura piped in. Okay. I am Hada Kakashi. I have no intentions of telling you my likes and dislikes. As for my dream he drifted off before snapping back to his students, I have few hobbies. All three gen in face faulted at how uninformative the introduction was. Your turn Sakura-san. Well I like, she said as she turned to look at Sasuke, I dislike, Naruto Baka. My dreams are, she continued to stare at Sasuke and then giggled when she said, and my hobby is. Oh great all three men thought, mentally face palming. Sasuke went through his likes, dislikes, and explained his dream of getting revenge on someone who he claimed had ruined his life, to which only Naruto seemed to notice the worried crease appear on Kakashi's face, then it was his turn. My name is Namaka's Naruto, I like, but your name is Yuzumaki Naruto Baka. Geez how are we going to survive when you can't even get your name right, Sakura interrupted, chest puffed out proudly to know she'd gotten another one up on the dead last. Actually Sakura that was my mother's last name, I recently learned that my father's surname was Namaka's. But I've only ever heard of one Namikaze living in Kanoha Silly, and that was the Yandame Hokid she drifted off as the two academy graduates stared at Naruto dumbfounded. Yep the Yandame was my dad. So the old man finally told you then, Kakashi said with an eye smile, it was about time, it's good to have you on the team Naruto. Before he could get cut off again Naruto quickly continued, anyway, my likes are Raymond and learning new techniques. My dislikes are people who assume they are better than others, and my dream is to become Hokage and make my parents proud. My hobbies include, few in jutsu, training, reading and cooking. Oh and can you not tell anyone who my dad was, I wanted you guys to know because you're my team, but I don't want heaps of other people to know yet. Akashi nodded, yes that is wise, I hope you heed these words, the Jounin said to the other two graduates. Before Kakashi could speak up about what they were to do next Sasuke spoke up, how can a dope like you be the Yandame's son? You were useless in the academy, what makes you think you can do better out here? Sasuke, a lot can change in a month, and there were circumstances when I was at the academy that shall we say limited my potential, but I believe our sensei was trying to talk. HMPH, whatever. Yes, what I was going to say was that tomorrow morning at 8am I want you to meet me at training ground 21 for your final examination, before becoming permanent genin in this squad. And don't eat breakfast beforehand. What? Sakura exclaimed, I thought we'd already passed and graduated, wasn't that what the academy was for? I don't see how this team is going to pass the bell test, and to think that I might have had the chance to train the son of my sensei. Yes, but you still need to pass this final test if you want to be shinobi of Konoha. He said before disappearing in a whirl of leaves. Chapter 3. The Bell Test. Training Ground 21 Konoha. As Sasuke entered the training field, Naruto dropped down from a tree next to him. Since when can Dobe sneak up on me like that? I didn't know he was there until he wanted me to. Something is definitely different about him that's for sure. Hey Dobe, Sasuke said coolly, playing off the fact that Naruto had actually gotten the drop on him, still got that grand idea in your head that you can beat me, even after everything in the academy. Ahaha, Naruto chuckled, don't expect me to be as weak I used to be Sasuke, I've learned a few new tricks since then. If we all pass this test you can fight me afterwards, settle this little issue you have with thinking you are better than everyone. DCH, why would I waste my time fighting someone who I know I can beat? Besides, do you even know how to use that sword? There's only one person I want to fight. You might change your tune after this test, depends on what we have to do. Anyway whatever it is it's probably going to test our teamwork, so we should start working together if we want to be a successful squad. Yeah whatever dope, Sasuke grumbled as he went and leant against a tree, waiting for Kakashi and Sakura to arrive. It didn't take long for a shrill hey Sasuke. To be heard from across the grounds. Oh man, how was I ever attracted to that, I mean she's pretty, but that voice, it's going to give me migraines. Come to think of it, was I always that loud too? Sakura ran over to Sasuke, not paying the slightest amount of attention to the fact that Naruto was there, but before she could start harassing him, Kakashi appeared in a swirl of leaves, his face planted in a book that Naruto by now knew was Icha Icha, after having gone through his parents' library. He'd figured by now that perversion was something that onset at puberty or something, every old guy he knew was a pervert. Okay guys, today you have to pass a test to see if you truly have what it takes to be Genin of Konoha. If you do not pass this test it is within my rights to send you back to the academy or remove you from the program altogether, at this both Sasuke and Sakura looked shocked and betrayed that Kanoha would do such a thing, Naruto however had a stern expression, thinking over what had been said so far, I have here two bells. I'd like you to do your best to take them from me. Whoever doesn't have a bell in three hours will not pass. Alright well can we begin Kakashi-sensei? 
Naruto asked before Sakura could pipe up about the injustice of it all. You may. He said turning his attention back to Icha Icha. From everything the academy told me Sasuke is the one that's going to give me the most trouble, although that Naruto is the Yandame's son, surely he can't be as hopeless as the academy teachers say he is. But that Sasuke and Sakura both launched themselves into the foliage above, Sasuke to scope out the situation, and Sakura because she was following Sasuke. Naruto just stood in the shade of the tree as Kakashi remained in the middle of training ground. This is going to be easy. Naruto thought to himself as he prepared to throw his kunai. Oh, what are you doing, don't stand out in the open like that. Naruto launched two Horatian kunai at Kakashi, intentionally throwing slightly wide, so that Kakashi wouldn't be tempted to move from his position. Naruto could tell the man had an apathetic nature, why make him move when he was in a perfect position? Kakashi looked up as the kunai flew toward him. Why would he throw those? He isn't a very good throw if that's the best he's got, they are both going wide. Ha! Dobe, what a crap throw, still the worst out of all of us I see, and he thinks he can beat me. It was a strange feeling in Kakashi's gut though, but by the time he realized what the problem was it was too late. Naruto saw the look of surprise on the face of his sensei just before he disappeared. Naruto materialized just to Kakashi's left as a kunai passed on either side of him. Slashing out with his tanto held firmly in his right hand in a draw and resheath motion, he cut the strings to the bells off Kakashi's belt in the blink of an eye, grabbing them in his left hand. Do slow sensei, Naruto said before disappearing and reappearing on the other side of the field, already retrieving his kunai. What just happened? One second Naruto was on one side of the field, the next he was on the other with the bells in his hand. Sakura hadn't even seen Naruto materialize next to Kakashi it had happened so fast. How did he get so fast? That has to be some technique, there is no way he covered that distance on foot, it must have something to do with those kunai. It's not fair, I'm the one that needs that power. And so the yellow flash of Konoha returns, well this is big news. Kakashi thought to himself after getting over his initial shock. Naruto shunned Shin back over to the tree he was originally standing under, still quick, but in the end nowhere near as fast as his previous movements. Kakashi walked back over to the trio as Sakura and Sasuke dropped down from their hiding places, meanwhile Naruto had walked up to Sakura and Sasuke and given each of them a bell. BB but why would you give us a bell, Sakura asked, still shocked at the turn of events. Because I got them without the help of you and Sasuke, you didn't even get to show off your skills. It's kind of unfair to you. That being said I'd kind of already worked out the point of the test anyway. I mean have you ever heard of a three-man squad? It was a test of teamwork, I kind of invalidated it, though, Su, he said turning to Kakashi, do we pass Kakashi sensei? Ahaha I guess I have no choice but to pass you three, I mean otherwise I'd have to come up with another test, and I couldn't be bothered, I smiling at the three as he said this. They all face faulted. Anyway that was incredible Naruto, since when have you been able to do the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique? So that's what it was, the signature jutsu of the Yandame, I should have known. Sasuke thought bitterly at getting so utterly shown up by the dope. Ahahaha that's my little secret, and I've by no means mastered it, but anyway, seeing as we passed and it's only been like a minute, do you want to see what I can really do? Naruto asked with a smirk on his face. Don't get too cocky Naruto, I'd love to take you down a notch, although if I want to stand a chance against that speed, I'll need to use one of my own tricks. He said as he pulled up his hit eye and opened his eye, surprising them with a fully awakened Sharingan. Right well if you're getting that serious I better take off my weights, at this they all raised their eyebrows in surprise as all of the seals on his clothing flashed once, indicating that they'd been turned off. Um Naruto, how much weight were you wearing just then? Sakura asked, curious as to how fast he'd be now. Oh not much, I need to bump up the number of seals when I get home. Each seal is equivalent to 10 kilograms, all up 60 kilograms. Akashi raised his eyebrows in surprise, the kid seemed quick even without the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique, he could only wonder what speed and strength he had now, that he weighed half as much as before. He'd heard the story about the kid learning the cage bunch and no jutsu, shadow clone technique, and creating a ton of cage bunch and to fight Mizuki after he realized he'd been tricked. The story must be true, because this amount of progress would only have been possible for someone with the ability to create that many clones. Sakura was shocked. This couldn't be the same Naruto, there was no way. Naruto was a goofy obnoxious prankster who couldn't even do a bunshin. How is it that he was now a serious shinobi who actually knew what he was doing and was actually good at it? Sasuke was fuming, he was furious that Naruto had been able to become so strong that he was already what appeared to be Kakashi's favorite, even when Kakashi had a Sharingan. He needed Kakashi, not Naruto, he needed to get stronger so he could destroy the man who ruined his life. How had the last in their class surpassed him in just over a month? No normal person should be able to progress at that speed. Little did Sasuke know that Naruto was no ordinary human being. 
over the past month, working as hard as he was working, and with the number of clones he could produce, he had accrued what would have been years of training and knowledge gathering for anybody else. Naruto wasn't even sure himself what number of clones he'd been creating, but even working for six hours a day, which was an extremely low estimate as there were days when he was working himself into the ground with 200 clones, that was the equivalent of approximately four years training time alone, not including what he did with the rest of his day. Four years of training could result in a ridiculous amount of progress. And with the amount of material he had in his parents' study to go over, techniques, combat tactics, styles, jutsu, chakra manipulation and control, and original ideas for improving his current jutsu, he had no shortage of things to train. Quick as a flash Naruto had launched a number of Horatian kunai at Kakashi, again none of them looked to actually hit him, instead they had gone relatively low landing in the ground, which was what worried him, Naruto was trying to get a positional advantage over him. He plans on using his strongest technique to corral me to try and force a mistake. Naruto kept throwing the kunai, of which he had an almost endless supply, thanks to his dad's arsenal and a number of storage scrolls. The Kashi made to rush Naruto to instead try and force a mistake from the boy, but rather than running away and giving Kakashi time to make a string of hand seals Naruto simply disappeared, reappearing a few feet from the jown and underneath a kunai he'd just thrown with the tanto in his right hand, bringing it around the front of his body in a backhand slash. The Kashi made to block with a kunai in his left hand and attack with his right, but as his kunai and the tanto made contact Naruto brought around his left, forming a blue spiraling orb of chakra. The Kashi hastily pushed off with his left hand and did a backhand spring to get some distance from another one of the Yandame's signature moves, all the while making sure not to come too close to any of the kunai lying on the ground. Naruto wasn't giving him enough time to get a string of hand seals together for a jutsu, he was simply too quick with the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique. He understands the advantage he has with that technique and knows the things could change if I could get a jutsu off. But with an offensive like that with the use of the Rasengan I can't afford to stand still, the kid formed it as he was punching me, incredible. If I give Naruto an opening for even a second he'll be on me. The worst part is that he's not looking me in the eyes. But Kakashi had a plan. He continued backpedaling away from the incredibly quick Naruto, making sure to keep his defenses up while staying away from any stray kunai that were on the ground or that Naruto was throwing and started veering towards the river. If he could get onto the river Naruto wouldn't be able to rely on any stray kunai on the ground. He'd lessen the advantage of Naruto's Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique by a fair amount, but Naruto saw this and wasn't having any of it. Bakashi had managed to force his hand somewhat. Naruto either had to get between Kakashi and the water, end the fight right then and there, or lose part of his advantage. Realizing that Naruto threw two more Horatian kunai at Kakashi. Kakashi waited as both kunai flew past him and turned to attack should Naruto appear. Naruto, surmising that Kakashi was about to counter the forced move, flashed to one of the kunai and released three more kunai directly at Kakashi, before flashing away almost as soon as he arrived. Running towards the water, Kakashi couldn't change his momentum fast enough to avoid the three point blank kunai and was forced to deflect them, wondering when Naruto was going to use them to appear. Instead, Naruto had flashed to a location off to the side with a kunai that he'd set up just before throwing the original two past Kakashi. He charged in from the side just as Kakashi attempted to deflect the three kunai. Kakashi turned just as Naruto thrust out a Rasengan in his right hand, which he was forced to reel away from, but surprisingly Naruto let the Rasengan fade just before following through with a left-handed punch that connected with Kakashi's chest. The punch connected, Naruto channeled a burst of chakra to the end of his fist at the exact correct moment, and Kakashi exploded into fine rain of splinters, having performed Kawarami no Jutsu body replacement technique at the last second. Very impressive Naruto, but that's enough for today I think, I should go and report the results of the bell test to the Hokage and would rather not be turned into a fine red paste, man you pack a hit if you manage to do that to a log. Also never ever underestimate the power of a log. It may very well save your life one day, let that be a lesson to all of you, he said to his students as he walked out of the tree line with an eye smile, now I need to be going, meet me at the Hokage's building tomorrow at 9 o'clock to pick up our first mission. And he disappeared in a whirl of leaves. As the three rookie genin began walking back into the main part of town Naruto turned to them, so do you guys have anywhere you need to be for the rest of the day? They both looked at him cautiously, not sure how to answer before Sakura spoke up, no, not really why. She had no reason not to tell the truth, even if she was talking to Naruto. What about you Sasuke? No, Dobe I don't have anywhere to be. Sasuke replied as grouchy as ever. Well then team I was wondering if you guys wanted to come over to mine to train, now that we're a team. Even if they treated him harshly when they were at the academy, Naruto was getting over Sakura and Sasuke had his reasons for being insufferable. They were on his team now and if anything Naruto wanted them to improve as much as he had. 
Um I guess, but how do you have room to train? Sakura was hesitant at first, but after seeing how Naruto performed during the test, she saw no harm in training with him, he might be able to help her get better. Sasuke was thinking the same, that maybe if he trained with Naruto, he could learn the secrets to his rapid improvement. Well I kind of inherited my parents' place when I was told who they were, so I have heaps of training room. It's where I've been the past month basically, improving my skills. Here hold on, I don't feel like walking the rest of the way. Um I don't know about TH, but Naruto had already grabbed both of them by the collars and flashed away. So your team passed then Kakashi, was it the Ichiha kid who did most of the work? Asuma asked when Kakashi appeared in the office of the Hokage, only three Jounin were present as only three teams had passed, Team 7, 8, and 9. Kurinai stood there expectantly as she waited for Kakashi to answer. Actually it was Naruto, he kind of invalidated the test. What? How do you invalidate the bell test? Kurinai was curious as to what a genin could do to ruin the test. Apart from telling the other genin the point of the test before it starts, Kakashi explained, which he didn't do, there is always getting both bells himself. Both Kurinai and Asuma burst out laughing. But one Kakashi, but seriously how do you invalidate the test? Asuma roared after his bout of laughter. He wasn't kidding, Asuma, Kurinai, come see for yourself, Hiruzen said as he showed them his crystal ball. They both stood watching wide-eyed as the replay ended in seconds. What, but that's crazy. How does a genin move like that? Duration no jutsu, if you hadn't worked it out already he is the son of Yandane. I don't know how he learnt it, but it's incredible, Kakashi said, and if you think that's good we had a real fight afterwards to test his metal against me. I used my Sharingan. And? Kurinai and Asuma both inquired. If I hadn't used Kawarami no jutsu at the last second, at the very best I'd be in hospital, worst I'd be a stain on the ground. It might have turned out differently if the fight had started on my terms, but they started on his, and I didn't even have a chance to use a jutsu, any of the techniques I might have been able to use that don't involve hand seals, probably would have killed him. Show them Hokage-sama. Gurunai and Asuma were both outright amazed at the fight, a genin gave a high-level jounin who was using Sharingan. He hasn't even mastered the jutsu yet, but I can safely say that it would have been terrifying fighting the Yandane. It didn't matter that I could see the kid and see what he was doing, he was too quick for me to stop him. That and he knew what I was trying to do by running to the water. The kid is easily high tune and level now, with just those two techniques and his knowledge of how to use them, and he's probably got even more tricks up his sleeve, I mean he didn't even use shadow clones. Not to mention the power of that hit, I don't know how a kid his size hits that hard. He probably uses the same method Tsunade uses, chakra manipulation, here is an offered from his position behind the desk, if you look closely at the point of impact you can see a flash, that'd be a chakra burst. But didn't the academy say that his chakra control was horrible? Asuma didn't know how someone could improve their chakra control so easily in just a month. You forget that chakra manipulation and control can be practiced and improved over time. And with the number of clones Naruto can create, he has had the equivalent of all the time in the world to train over this past month, the Hokage added, as if settling the matter, either way it doesn't matter, he'll continue to improve in Team 7, maybe it'll even positively affect Sasuke now that there is someone his age that is his better. They all nodded, knowing that Sasuke's current ideas of revenge were only going to ruin his life. We can only hope Kakashi thought to himself as they were dismissed. If you feel like vomiting take it outside, was the first thing out of Naruto's mouth when they arrived back in his living room. Sasuke seemed relatively fine, if a little unsettled, but Sakura had to quickly excuse herself as she went outside to get some air. You okay Sakura-chan? After a couple of minutes she walked back inside looking much better, yeah I'm fine now, but man that felt weird Naruto, so how did you get so powerful all of a sudden? Hot Sasuke asked obnoxiously. Yeah Naruto, what did you do? I trained. It's as simple as that. I worked hard. Unfortunately it's not something you can emulate. What? We can't train, are you stupid dope? I wasn't finished yet team, what I meant was that you can't train the way I did. I use shadow clones to train, which according to the Hokage, require down in levels of chakra to create about 5 to 10 comfortably without putting the user in danger. Each shadow clone passes on its memories to me, the original, so whatever they learn, I learn. The thing is, I've had a condition since I was born that has given me ridiculous amounts of chakra. So I can create a lot more. How many more Naruto? Sakura asked curiously. I make upwards of 200 for training purposes. Naruto said casually. You learn 200 times faster? Sakura was shocked, that kind of learning rate was crazy, the things you could get done if you did things 200 times faster was phenomenal. So that explains why I improved so much over such a short time. I've been getting pretty bad headaches sometimes though. But I asked Jiraiya, and he said that that'd be because I'm taking in a lot of information all the time, so it's just mental stress. Wait, you know Jiraiya of the Sanin? Sakura asked dumbstruck, that guy was famous. 
Oh yeah I forgot to tell you he is my godfather, isn't that cool? Naruto replied with a smile on his face while rubbing the back of his head. This is bullshit. I train so hard all the time to get stronger, and then you find out you have a hotshot shinobi godfather who's probably taught you awesome techniques and an ability to learn incredibly fast and overtake me. I need to be the strongest to achieve my goal. Actually Sasuke, Naruto said with his voice rising, he was starting to get sick of his attitude, Jiraiya has taught me one move so far. Everything else I've learned by myself. Even the Horatian no jutsu that you saw me using today, I learned that by myself. Okay. What's so important that you need to be better than everyone else huh? Because there is only one reason I'll accept. Fine. I need to kill my brother. I need to avenge my clan. Sasuke screamed, they didn't understand, you don't know what it's like to lose everything. No, I don't. But I know what it's like to have nothing since day one. To live alone in fear of your life with only one person who will bother talking to you at all. To hope that whenever I went out as a child I wasn't mugged or killed. To live alone of the streets for a time because that was what it took to survive. For my whole life people have just ignored that I even exist, and the ones who didn't generally were people trying to hurt or kill me. People would just pretend that the poor orphan didn't exist. Do you know how hard that was for me huh? Why do you think I acted out all the time? Because I wanted people to just acknowledge my existence. But then I found out why people hated me, and then I found out almost straight after that my father was responsible for it. I was angry, I was hurt, but I forgave my father because it was the only thing he could do. After seeing this house and my nursery, my fucking nursery Sasuke, and seeing a happy photo of my family just before I was born, I knew exactly what I'd lost, I lost so much the day I was born. But I didn't wallow in self-pity, I didn't become lost in grief. I became driven to be the best that I can be in order to make my parents proud. To become a shinobi that the village will admire and become strong so I can protect this village, so what happened to my family won't happen to anybody else's. Sakura was standing near the door, tears falling down her face as she listened to Naruto's story, imagining all the times that she had been mean to him in the academy. She felt horrible, sick to her stomach that she was partly responsible for Naruto's misery. Sasuke was taken aback that someone had had it as rough, or in Naruto's case rougher than he had, although Sasuke would never admit it. Don't let grief and rage consume you Sasuke, do you think your parents would want you to seek revenge if it meant sacrificing yourself? DCH was all Sasuke could say in response as he got up and walked to the door. Just what I thought, Naruto said to his back, anyway, when you want to learn something come around and I'll try and teach you what I can, you are still in my team, he continued, his voice softening. Whatever, and with that he was gone. Sakura wasn't quite sure what to do. Did she follow Sasuke out or stay with Naruto for now, before she could come to a decision, Naruto had come to one for her, come on, let's get some training done before the day is up, shall we? He said with a smile as he wiped the tears out of his eyes. Is all of what you said true Naruto? Sakura asked as they walked outside to a training field. Every word of it, I had no reason to lie to Sasuke. Lying isn't going to turn him off the path he's on. Anyone could see that. Well can I ask why it is people hate you then? She asked nervously, not sure how to tread across what she though was thin ice. As annoying as Naruto was in the academy, she didn't know about why he was the way he was, and now he seemed to be a lot more tolerable. He was even a teammate, a strong teammate who was offering help. She couldn't not do the same for him if there was some way for her to help. I suppose you can, being on my team and all, but I'd like you to keep it a secret. I'm pretty sure our year doesn't know about it, but all the old people do. Do you know what the Kaiubi is? She nodded, well it wasn't destroyed, because it can't be destroyed. On the night of the attack 12 years ago, my father had to seal it inside of me in order to save the village. So it's right here, in my belly. It's the reason I have such a large amount of chakra. And the reason people hate me. They don't see me when they look at me, they just see the killer fox that attacked the village. Sighing he turned and created a number of clones that ran off and began training. That was horrible. Sakura couldn't believe that Naruto had had to live with such a burden and so much resentment for something he had no control over. It would have driven her insane if she was in his position. She was seeing the real Naruto today. The ninja that wouldn't quit no matter what, the ninja that would achieve his dream of becoming a great ninja that could protect those he loved or die trying. Not the obnoxious loud-mouthed orange ninja facade, but the true Naruto. I'm so sorry Naruto-kun, she said as she pulled him into an unexpected hug. Well this is nice. He thought as he looked down at the top of her head. It's okay Sakura-chan you had nothing to do with it, you didn't even know, he smiled down at her. But I was so mean to you, I can't believe you've had to deal with so much. Like I said, it's okay. I forgive you. It's nice to hear that you are sorry, but really I'm okay, now let's get to training. Naruto created a massive number of clones once again and had them get to work at training a great number of things. He then spent the rest of the afternoon teaching Sakura how to wall walk. She got it almost straight away. 
apparently she had expert chakra control due to the small amount of chakra she had. He told her she'd have to work on improving that though if she was to get stronger, explaining that the chakra coils in the body can be expanded by using chakra more often. When she was adequate at walking on the trees, he got her to run up and down the trees to try giving her mild chakra exhaustion. When that wasn't working fast enough he decided that some light sparring while hanging upside down would be good training. By dinner they were about both ready to hit the hay, well Sakura was, Naruto could have kept training, but neither of them had eaten. So Naruto cooked up some homemade pork ramen, took her by the hand and flashed away. Why do you have a Horatian kunai up here Naruto? They were standing at the top of the Hokage Monument lookout over the village. Sometimes when I'm taking a break I like to sit up here and look out over the village, knowing that one day I'll be their protector. They spent the evening sitting atop the monument looking out over Kanoha, eating and talking about what lay ahead and what he was going to get her to train on next. Thanks for today Naruto-kun, it was great to actually learn something new since Academy and you're a pretty good teacher. You make some mean ramen too. She said with a smile before she rushed home, worried about getting scolded by her parents. Apart from his disturbing encounter with Sasuke Naruto could say he had a pretty great day just training with Sakura, even if she did get a little grumpy when she was having trouble sticking to the tree and paying attention to fighting him. He went to sleep with a smile on his face that night. Things in Konoha might finally start going his way. Over the next couple of months, Team 7 completed a variety of D-rank missions, the most annoying of which would have been the retrieval of a maniacal cat by the name of Tora had Naruto not been able to use Horatian no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique. Whenever they weren't doing missions Sakura and Naruto were training, and they grew quite close over time. Naruto got the feeling that Sakura was still madly in love with Sasuke, but it was still nice to have another friend around. They only ever saw Sasuke during missions, and any time there was team training, and he would disappear before Sakura even had a chance try and track him down and spend time with him. After a few repeated attempts at finding him she gave up and decided that she'd just have to spend as much time as she could with him on missions. She was improving rapidly now that she had Naruto to teach her. Kakashi really didn't do much with regards to teaching them techniques. Hell, he didn't even teach them much at all. He was more like their chaperone most of the time, just making sure they didn't get in trouble during a mission and keeping them in line. Sakura had mastered tree and water walking almost straight away. Naruto then started working on improving her to jutsu and chakra stores. This proved more difficult, but it paid off for her when Naruto taught her how to use chakra to add more power to her punches. He figured it didn't require excessive amounts of chakra, but still required precise chakra control, so it was the perfect way to give her a strength boost. Sakura was grateful for all the help she was receiving from Naruto. And it wasn't like she was hindering his progress. By the end of the first month of missions Naruto had increased the weights on his clothing to 90 kilograms, within two months they were at 120 kilograms, almost twice his body weight. He kept trying to increase his speed, trying to do justice to the legacy of the yellow flash. He was still learning as he trained Sakura, and this was displayed by his increasing mastery of Fuinjutsu. He was even working on elemental chakra, after having found from Jiraiya and the use of a special piece of paper that his affinity was wind. By the end of the two months he'd already worked out how to extend his blade through wine chakra manipulation and had learned his share of wind ninjutsu to complement his skills. But it wasn't just Sakura and himself that were improving. After training with Sakura for the first time he made an effort to go and find the other rookie genin teams to offer them a bit of training if they wanted it. At first they were doubtful, but decided that they would at the insistence of their Jounin sensei, who really knew how strong Naruto had become. They wouldn't complain if someone was helping them improve their teams in their spare time. They weren't let down by the knowledge that Naruto had of the ninja arts, and each of the genin started showing marked improvements, now that he was helping them along. Naruto was also finding Fuinjutsu to be an extremely powerful art and wondered why no one studied it. Jiraiya was the one to answer that question, explaining that there were very few people alive that could do great Fuinjutsu and fewer people who taught it. It was a rare and powerful ability that he explained the Uzumaki clan were wiped out for having. As he progressed in his studies he realized he could apply seals to his own body that would do a variety of things, even the seal for the Horatian no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique. Naruto had also developed a seal that used a space-time manipulation to transport a chakra burst to a hub seal whenever chakra was run through it, mainly the one that he now had on the middle of his forearm. Every one of the rookie genin aside from Sasuke now had two seals in the middle of the inside of their forearms. Naruto had come to them with an idea and none of them had any objections. One of the seals was the chakra burst seal, the other was the Horatian seal. Now whenever any of them were in trouble they only needed to channel chakra into the seal to notify Naruto that they needed him. He could then use to Horatian no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, to teleport straight to their location. He also used a failsafe that he engineered from his father's barrier seal. 
It stopped the seal from sending the burst of chakra, if the chakra channeled through it wasn't the same as the person who the seal was applied to, stopping an ambush for him if they were captured. The first time that everyone had arrived at his clan compound for training, they were skeptical about what they could be taught by the supposed dead last of the academy. They'd only come because their sensei had recommended it. The six genins stood there as Naruto walked onto the training ground to greet them. Sakura had been training earlier that morning and stood looking confidently at her academy friends. Flashback, she didn't like how Naruto had started giving training to everyone, she might have been a touch jealous that she wasn't the only one getting special treatment now, but she did understand why he wanted to do it. They were all part of the same village, fighting to protect everyone and improve Konoha's standing. So why did our sensei say we come and train here with you whenever we had free time huh? What's so special about you Naruto? I could beat you easy. Kiba said obnoxiously from the lineup Akamaru barking to reinforce his statement. Naruto had visited each team around a month ago, but this was the first time any of the six genin had visited at all, he guessed they'd been busy. I wouldn't be so sure Kiba, there's something different about him now, look even the way Sakura's acting around him has changed. Shikamaru said in response, a thoughtful look plastered on his face. Akamaru was still barking defiantly, while the rest stood and watched as Naruto walked up to an upright log about three feet in diameter that he had his clones put into the training ground the night before. About eight feet of it was sticking out of the ground. Hiba, come up to this and punch it as hard as you can for me will you? Naruto challenged. Uh, okay, I'll break that thing like the toothpick it is. His false bravado ringing through the air as he walked over to the log. He stood compassing himself before charging at it and launching what looked to be his strongest punch. His fist collided with it only for a cracking sound to be heard. Oh Kami, I think I almost broke my hand. Screaming as Naruto came over to inspect the damage. Well that'd be log 1 Kiba 0, never underestimate the log Kiba. And it looks like you only dislocated a finger. Give me your hand, he said grabbing Kiba's hand quickly before the boy could object and popping the finger back in. Kami, that hurt almost as much, all the other genin could do was hang their heads in shame and face palm at the stupidity of their friend. So what was the point of that demonstration Naruto, to show how dumb Kiba is? Shika queried, getting a growl from both Kiba and Akamaru. I wasn't finished yet smarty pants, Sakura, please demonstrate the correct technique to breaking a log. The ha 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 good one Naruto, how is Sakura able to do it if I couldn't, that thing is as solid as a rock, by now the other genin thought Naruto was playing a joke and started laughing, albeit not nearly as confidently as Kiba, with Hinata just looking shyly at Naruto. That was until Sakura walked straight up to the log and from a standing position punched it so hard that her fist went a foot into the front side and a cloud of splinters exploded from the back as the top of the log fell backwards onto the ground. Very well done Sakura-chan. That, my friends, is how you correctly break a log. Although something as majestic as a log will never be kept down for long, they would have looked at him strangely if they weren't busy trying to pick their jaws up off the ground, now who would like to start training, and with that they all raised their hands, still dumbstruck at what Sakura had been able to do. Then flashback, since then there was rarely a time when all of teams 8 and 9 were there together, mostly it was one or two people showing up whenever they weren't busy with missions, family matters, or team training. Naruto thought it was great to finally have not only the respect of the other genin, but also their friendship, as they all grew closer as a group over time. Even Hinata started coming out of her shell a little bit as Naruto continued to train her. She still was a little bit funny, blushing all the time, but she no longer went completely red in the face when he touched her arm or gave her a pat on the back, and she'd finally gotten used to him complimenting her. Gureya stopped in every now and again to check on Naruto's progress and was still amazed at what the kid was able to do, not that he'd ever tell him. Whenever Jiraiya visited he would train him to get better with a toad summons, and they would occasionally do battle. He even showed him how to use a toad summon to create a stronger attack by combining two jutsu. When the time came for their first seer rank mission Naruto and Sakura were ready. Naruto couldn't comment on Sasuke's progress though, as he'd never seen much from him during team trainings and their D-rank missions. But the boy had been looking even more unsettled than usual since his argument with Naruto. As Kakashi and his team exited the village of Konoha with a bridge builder named Tazuna, he could only hope that they were ready for anything. Chapter 4. Sasuke's Insecurities As they walked down the road leading away from the village, Kakashi could only marvel at the way his team had changed. Sakura was much less enamored with Sasuke, which he took for a good thing, he couldn't have her getting distracted part way through a mission. What Kakashi didn't know was that it was because of Naruto. Flash back a week after their first mission, Sakura, you have to stop jazzing Sasuke, she had just turned up to training with Naruto late, once again because of a hunt for Sasuke, who had unsurprisingly eluded her, she had no idea where he kept going. Why? You want me to date you do you? Sorry well it's not going to happen, she said spitefully, thinking of Sasuke, then realizing that it sounded a bit harsh and she blushed, feeling rather bad. 
She was surprised when Naruto just laughed, haha, ha, actually no, I want you to stop going after Sasuke for yourself. You do realize it is hindering your ability to become the shinobi that you have the potential to be. This infatuation with Sasuke, going out of your way to do what you think will make him happy. It is putting you at a disadvantage to every other shinobi who is focused on being a shinobi and staying alive. Start eating properly, start training properly, and start being a shinobi Sakura-chan. I don't want you to date me if you really don't like me. I'm past that, I decided to put aside my feelings for you and get stronger for the sake of myself and everyone around me. If I was always so focused on you I wouldn't be able to focus on progressing myself, at this she was shocked. Had Naruto really done that? It would explain why she hadn't had any unwanted advances from him, probably why she felt a lot more comfortable around him, but that might have just been the whole teaching thing. Easy for you to say, I love Sasuke and I need to make him happy. Sakura, right now there is only one thing that would make Sasuke happy, and there is no way that you can give it to him. He will just keep taking everything you give him and more, your time, your affection, your progress, and he won't give anything in return. For once, put your own well-being ahead of his, look out for yourself for a change. That couldn't be true, not her Sasuke. The more she thought about it though, the more she realized it was true. And she hated that Naruto had pointed it out. For now she'd focus on herself. But I won't forget you Sasuke she promised. Naruto was glad to see that since then Sakura had stopped hunting after Sasuke and focused much harder on progressing herself. She was still crazy about him at team trainings, but her improvement was indicative of her choice. And flashback, not only that but Sakura also seemed to be getting much stronger, and it was probably thanks to Naruto. The academy teachers really didn't give that kid enough credit when he was driven to do something, whether it was to improve himself or his teammates, he'd stop at nothing. Akashi still couldn't get a read on what was bothering Sasuke, maybe it was something someone had said to him. He'd have to ask Naruto some time. He couldn't have Sasuke at nothing but 100%, even if this was a C-rank mission. Naruto's progress was crazy, the kid looked as if he was at the peak of physical condition for his age, and it was probably because he had been driving himself into the ground whenever he had the chance to train. No one knew it, but the reason Naruto could increase his physical condition so quickly was because of the Kaiubi's chakra and the rate at which it healed his body. Naruto's muscles and tendons would be healed and regrown almost straight after he'd sent them through hell. Bakashi noted that he'd probably be able to give Lee a good run for his money in his condition at the moment. The thing that would throw it in Naruto's favor would be his ability to use ninjutsu. What are those things on your arms? Sasuke asked as they continued down the road, it was the first time he'd seen them. Naruto however had already explained them to Kakashi, and their sensei was impressed at his genin's forethought, not that he wasn't impressed with a lot that Naruto Namikas did. They are more or less a distress beacon, if Sakura gets in trouble she can contact me with a burst of chakra through the first seal, and I'll use the second seal to come to her rescue, Naruto smiled as he rubbed the back of his head, cool huh? Do you want one? DCH, why would I ever want your help dope, you just get in my way. That kid's pride is going to get him killed, hell it might even get his teammates hurt, something needs to be done about it, Kakashi thought as he shook his head. None of them were impressed with Sasuke's comment, Naruto was still annoyed that Sasuke was still turning down any help he offered, and Sakura was once again forced to doubt Sasuke, only to shrug it off on the fact that Sasuke had had to deal with so much in his life. Then why isn't Naruto like Sasuke, he's had it even worse, a voice said in the back of her head in contradiction. What's with the superiority complex Sasuke? I mean I know all Ichihas have a stick up their ass, but am I going to have to break you, or will you still not accept my help, even when it's blatantly clear that I'm a better shinobi? Naruto's reply was a bit much, but Sasuke's attitude was constantly wearing down his patience. Sasuke's merely gave him the patented Ichiha glare number 21. You tell him Naruto. Sakura's inner personality screamed. Sakura was at odds with herself aren't we supposed to defend Sasuke, what are you doing? Come on, I know we love the guy, but that was a move. Eyes, enough, this is no way to act in front of a client or on a mission, focus, they all turned to look back towards Kakashi at this before moving on. They continued in silence until they passed a small puddle on the side of the road. Kakashi was glad to see Sakura slowly move her hand to the chakra pulse seal and notify Naruto that something was off. He gave a nod that he had noticed the subtle Jinjutsu as well. Kakashi watched as they slowly shifted into better stances in case they came under attack. He noted that the Ichiha genius was the only one to not question why there was a sizable puddle to the side of the road when it hadn't been raining at all that day. The Kashi sighed well at least two of them were paying attention, Sasuke must be too busy brooding, we are going to need to have a long sit down. Sasuke turned when he heard the clash of kunai. Sakura and Naruto were both engaged with a ninja. Naruto had his tanto out, while Sakura had a regular kunai, the enemies were wearing a metal gauntlet that had a chain running between the two. It looked like it could be used for deadly coordination attacks, as the chain had razor-sharp edges. 
The Kashi was nowhere to be seen, and Sasuke was shocked that their sensei could abandon them. That chain could cause us some issues Naruto thought, coming to the conclusion that Kakashi would have seen the Jinjutsu and decided to test them. Quickly pushing off his attacker with surprising strength he spun to the side, channeling Wind Chakra through his blade and cut straight through one of the links in the chain, rendering it useless. The other ninja saw what happened and released it so it wouldn't get in his way. Naruto followed up with a series of swift sword strikes that had the ninja retreating, blocking each of the strikes desperately, caught off guard by the small kid's speed. He finished with an overhead strike, forcing the ninja to move to block with the side of his gauntlet. As the blade connected, Naruto channeled a large amount of wind chakra into the blade, honing it to an edge as best he could. The metal of the gauntlet parted like butter before the reinforced attack, severing the ninja's hand at the wrist. Ozu. The other ninja yelled, distracted by his partner's screams. Sakura quickly stepped inside his guard and landed a fight finishing punch on the shinobi's chest. They all heard ribs breaking as he flew off the end of her fist. Naruto dropped into a low sweep, knocking Gozu's legs out from beneath him, while he simultaneously created a clone that appeared above him, knee-driving the missing nin into the ground as he fell. Needless to say, after the short encounter, neither of the shinobi were able to move. Well done you two, that was very impressive. Naruto how long have you been able to manipulate wind chakra like that? Kakashi appeared in a shunshin behind Sakura and Naruto. I've been training it for a while, ever since I found out from Iro Senen that I was a wind type. Hadn't tried it out on anything steel before though, pretty cool huh? You just keep getting more and more surprising Naruto and Sakura too, she didn't even flinch when they appeared out of the water. Sasu quickly hid his shock at the scene and turned, continuing down the road, as if nothing happened and stood against a tree, while Naruto created two shadow clones and stripped the two men of anything useful. When they were done they picked up the two men and dematerialized. Took them back to village, save someone coming and picking them up, Naruto informed the Jounin that had raised his eye at Naruto's clones disappearing. Now, Kakashi turned on Tazuna, would you care to explain why we were just attacked by two missing men, the demon brothers to be more precise? What haven't you told us? The old man, having two missing men attack us isn't the norm of a sea rank. If we weren't on the ball we might have almost gotten killed. We could have frozen up like Sasuke team over there, within seconds Sakura's Sasuke defenses kicked in, and he had a fist slammed into the top of his head. What did you do that for? Your hits actually hurt. Yeah what did you do that for? He was right. Dahhh I don't even know anymore Sakura thought as she walked up to a tree and in her bout of inner turmoil, had butted it so hard that it left a sizable impression. Hmph, maybe that big forehead is good for something, tch not like you're good for anything else. Sasuke was at the point of taking low blows and trying to get his confidence up after seeing Sakura and Naruto floor those two ninja. Akashi was reminded of someone eerily familiar as she stormed over to Sasuke in her blind anger and hit him square in the jaw, sending him flying further down the road. Almost as soon as she did this she screamed after him, checking to see if he was okay and professing her love for him. Women huh? The remaining spectators chorused. I heard that. I'm coming for you three next. Naruto balked and disappeared in a shunshin. Kakashi looked a little wary, but was still laughing at the way Naruto disappeared. Way to act manly Naruto, haha <laughs> running from a girl. You don't understand, I taught her how to hit like Tsunade. A voice could be heard echoing through the forest. Naruto knew who Tsunade was after going through his library and talking to Jiraiya about the Sanin. She was the inspiration for using his chakra to greatly improve the impact behind his hits. This time it was Kakashi's turn to balk as he disappeared, sorry Tazuna, but you know you shouldn't make derogatory comments about women, it was him Sakura, it was all him. Another voice echoed from Kakashi's hiding place in the forest. Oh shut up you cowards, don't we have a mission to get back to? Sakura seemed to have calmed down a little after hitting Sasuke in her rage, and they all decided to gather around Tazuna. Well, the old man quickly began, horrified after the strange scene that had played out and afraid of what would happen if he didn't tell them what they wanted to know. He continued to spill the beans on everything that had happened to the Land of Waves since Gato started taking over. Gato's likely hired more ninja, are you sure you want to continue team? We could send for reinforcements. We haven't been training for nothing Kakashi sensei. I don't want to waste manpower for something that could be handled by ourselves, it wouldn't give our team a very good reputation, you know what I mean. The yeah, Naruto kun is right we should keep going. But the dope said. I guess it's settled then, let's go, we need to make up some time. It wasn't long until they noticed a mist creeping in around their feet. Before long it was so thick that it was hard to even see. Okay, this is ridiculous, Naruto performed a series of hand seals before Fton. Tatapa, wind release. Great break though. A huge gust of air burst forth from his hand and cleared the fog in front of them, revealing the cause to be a man with a massive cleaver-like blade casually strolling toward them. It wasn't long before the mist began to settle back into its previous position, shrouding their vision. 
well that didn't do Mew. Everyone protect Azuna, and it didn't do much because that stuck. Everyone hit the floor just quickly enough to avoid being scalped by the huge iron blade that swung over their heads. There hadn't even been a warning as to its approach. Our opponent is the demon of the hidden mists of Yuza Mamachi, stay alert, and with that he disappeared in a blur. And that's why Kakashi is our sensei, that would have cut me in half. Naruto thought, actually worried about the outcome of this fight. This guy was obviously not a pushover, and the killing intent washing them over wasn't doing him any favors. No, he couldn't let it overcome him and his teammates. Fear would get him killed. He resolved himself to never back down. He would complete the mission and protect his teammates. Naruto looked over at Sasuke, frozen as he stood next to Tezuna, Sakura wasn't doing much better, her confidence slipping. He could see the fear in their eyes as they looked around. He needed to calm them down before Zabuza took another swing at the three of them. They wouldn't survive another attack in the state they were in. The eyes, snap out of it. We can take this guy, we've got Kakashi Sensei to look after us. Keep focused on the mission, he barely kept his voice from shaking as he quietly tried to get them to focus. They could hear clashes coming from all sides, no doubt Kakashi trying to keep Zabuza at bay. Let's get out of here, we need to keep Tazuna safe, Naruto needed to get out of this mist. Sure he could escape danger if he knew it was coming. But with this mist in the air, he had no way of knowing where the next strike was coming from. He heard a whistling as he turned and saw a blade arcing through the air once again. There was no time for a response, it was heading straight at him with vicious speed, and he couldn't flash away because the only nearby seal was Sakura. Jumping to her would result in the same outcome being that they were standing almost back to back, and he couldn't run from the fight altogether, he had to protect Azuna. He tried to bring a kunai up in time to meet the blade, hoping that it would stop its advance somewhat, but was saved from the assault when Kakashi blurred in front of him at the last second, blocking the blade and forcing Zabuza away from them. It wasn't before long though that the mist started to clear, run. Kakashi was yelling at his team, having been trapped within a water prison. Zabuza obviously didn't consider the genin enough of a challenge to warrant the continued use of Kurigakur no Jutsu, hiding in the mist technique. Azuna won't survive this Kakashi, Zabuza glared at the three genin as a water clone emerged from the water. What can three genin do against one of my clones, run along and leave that old man to me, and I might be inclined to spare you. Tazuna is as good as dead Zabuza was elated that it had been so easy to capture Kakashi and complete his mission. If you think it'll be so easy to get past us, think again. Naruto was trying to get everyone's confidence up. If he wasn't using that mist technique he was sure he could at least put up enough of a fight for the others to get Kakashi out. Sakura was emboldened by this, yeah just because we are small doesn't mean your clone can defeat us. And with that they spread out a little between Tazuna and the water clone. The Ichiha over there doesn't seem so confident. The clone rushed Sasuke, intent on rending him in two. Naruto had deactivated his weight seals the moment the trouble had started, but even he was surprised at the speed the clone moved now that he could see. He looked over at Sasuke and saw him lock up, looking death in the eyes. Naruto put everything he had in just making it there in time. Surging chakra through his legs just to close the distance, he brought his tanto around to stop the massive cleaver-like blade that was coming down from above. There was no way he could stop that strike that dead on, deflecting the blade he took his attention away from the situation for a moment get it together Sasuke, we need you to fuck dot. While he was trying to get Sasuke to snap out of it, the clone had taken the opening to punch him in the gut with his free hand with such force that it put Naruto on his knees, blinking tears out of his eyes. He could only watch as the blade came down again, only this time for him. Sasuke was still coming out of his stupor, and if he flashed away it wouldn't stop the blade from coming down on his teammate. He tried to bring his blade around once again but was too slow. There was a loud clang as Sakura's hand bounced off the sword, sending it flying out of the clone's hand and sticking into a tree. Naruto saw his chance when the clone lashed out at the female genin, pushing her away and making his way for the sword. Naruto flung his hand out, burying a Horatian kunai slightly higher in the tree, while doing so he took a few steps forward from his crouching position as he stood up and gained momentum. The clone never saw it coming. He grabbed the hilt of the sword, turned back to the look at the three genin and smirked. Unfortunately for the copy, the smirk didn't survive Naruto planting his knee squarely into the side of his head as he reappeared, flying through the air above the sword. The clone dissolved into water along with the sword, and with that Naruto turned his attention to the real Zabuza, who was still currently shocked at what he'd just seen. Quickly pulling his kunai from the tree and walking over to the others, he made sure to see if Sakura was okay. Luckily Sasuke had just snapped out of it. Okay guys, I think I can get this guy away from Kakashi, make sure you stay alert, it's up to you to protect Azuna. So it looks like at least one of your runs has some talent Kakashi, you wouldn't believe it even if I told you. Naruto rushed to Buza, he knew that to keep the water prison up he needed to stay in contact with the orb, otherwise why hadn't he moved yet? 
sending a Horatian kunai directly at Zabuza's head, the large ninja was forced to dodge. This gave Naruto the chance he needed to get behind his deadly opponent. Flashing to the Horatian as soon as it had passed forced Zabuza to turn to deal with the immediate threat. There was no way he could deal with the genin without releasing the water prison. He dove away from the prison to avoid a point-blank tanto strike. As soon as he was on his feet though he was going through hand seals. Naruto made to cut him off, Naruto, stop, let me handle this, get back and protect Azuna, he turned to Kakashi to see that his sensei was copying every single seal that Zabuza was making, even as he was making them. The power of the Sharingan really is incredible, Naruto thought as he flashed back over to Sakura so that he wouldn't get in the way of the fight between two shinobi that still clearly outclassed him. It wasn't before long that Zabuza and Kakashi summoned massive water constructs in the shape of dragons that charged at each other. Both were pretty badly injured in the bout, but Zabuza was easily the worse off out of the two. Before Kakashi could finish him off however a mysterious shinobi appeared in a porcelain mask, claiming that they were a hunter nin from Kurigakur and would be taking the corpse back to the village. As they all gathered themselves around Tazuna, with Naruto picking up Kakashi he turned to Sasuke. Suo, Sasuke, are you actually going to do anything on this mission, or did you just come along to watch? I mean I don't mind doing your job for you, Naruto said lightheartedly, a huge grin on his face as he rubbed the back of his head. And with that they continued on to Tazuna's house. Naruto could almost feel the stare boring into the back of his head as he carried the exhausted and injured Kakashi to their destination. They arrived at Tazuna's house late in the afternoon and were greeted by a very attractive woman and a small sullen child. The two were Tsunami and Inari, Tazuna's daughter and grandson. After they settled in and greeted the two Kakashi informed the team that he didn't think that Zabuza was dead. He told them he would try and prepare them over the next few days as best he could for if Zabuza tried to take Tazuna's life again. The next day Kakashi took them into the forest before Tazuna left to work on the bridge. Okay team, I think today we'll start working on some chakra control exercises, how does while walking sound? Kakashi inquired to the group, ready to teach them something he thought would amaze them, not having seen Sakura or Naruto have to use it during team trainings. He'd figured that Naruto could do it, but he thought at least that Sakura might not know how. Essie was just surprising Sasuke then. Um, Sakura and I can already do that Kakashi-sensei, we've been sparring on water lately to practice chakra control, we've been working on it for a while. Sakura just nodded in agreement as Naruto deflated their teacher. Well, that's a bummer, his whole training plan was shot, guess he'd need to think of something else to teach them. Yeah right dope, as if. How could you do something like that without Kakashi-sensei teaching you? Sasuke still didn't believe that Naruto could do the things he claimed, even after everything he'd seen. In response Naruto just looked at him blankly as he proceeded to jump towards a tree and stick to the side of it. It's called reading a book Sasuke and teaching yourself, Sakura tried to explain to the moody teen. You really didn't think I'd be able to Horatian without the rudimentary chakra control it takes to walk up a tree did you? Well it can't be that hard if you can do it, Sasuke proceeded to sprint at the tree in his confidence. He made it a few steps due to his momentum before he fell harshly back onto the ground. It's not that simple Sasuke, try channeling your chakra to your feet for start. Shut up Sakura, I don't need any help from a pathetic fangirl and the dead last of the academy, Sasuke spat, furious that he was still playing catch up with Naruto and Sakura, how had they improved so much? Sakura was hurt. She began to tear up as Naruto walked down the tree and took her to the side. Sasuke was being even nastier than usual, what did she do wrong? Let's go train somewhere else Sakura, we wouldn't want to get in the big shot's way, Naruto said as he put an arm around her shoulder and began walking with her further into the forest. I don't have anything specific to train you guys, so you just do what you normally would. You Sasuke, you can practice while walking, and you'd be wise to listen to Naruto and Sakura once in a while, they know what they are doing. I won't. If I accept their help then how will I ever be strong enough to take revenge by myself? Well what they said was true Sasuke, channel chakra to the soles of your feet to stick to his surface. I leave a clone to watch you guys, I have to go protect Azuna now. Kakashi disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Over with Naruto Sakura was crying. What did I do Naruto-kun? Sasuke had been even coarser with her and the others since the encounter with the demon brothers. You didn't do anything Sakura-chan. He's jealous of what we can do and he thinks that he can be just as strong without anyone's help. It has something to do with his quest for revenge. There is nothing we can do about it now but get stronger. BB but if I get stronger then he'll hate me even more. Sakura was appalled that all her hard work over the past two months had been good for only getting Sasuke to hate her. Sakura-chan, look at me, Naruto placed his hand under her chin, turning her head towards him, don't let Sasuke put you off becoming a great shinobi. Remember what I told you. We will make him realize that to be the greatest we can be means we sometimes have to get help from others, now let's start our training for the day okay. 
Bi got a nod from the distraught Jenin, and they both fell into sparring, but her spirit just wasn't in it, so he called it a day on that idea. Instead they both sat, trying to get a number of leaves to stick to different parts of their body. Naruto had created a large number of clones to go and practice trying to cut into trees with wind chakra. As much as he had improved since the academy, Naruto still had a lot of work to do with his chakra manipulation. He had improved, that was evident, and the result of that was his ability to perform jutsu like the Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique, and the Rasengan, spiraling orb. But his chakra control wasn't perfect, so he was using way too much chakra than he should, hence why he was sitting with Sakura as they practiced that particular facet of their chakra control. They trained the rest of the day and went inside to have dinner. As they were sitting at the table, Inari glaring at the four shinobi, Kakashi turned to his students, so Sasuke, you should keep up with that training tomorrow, maybe Sakura or Naruto might give you a few pointers. DCH, whatever, Naruto could feel the patented Ichiha glare number 24 boring into the top of his head as he looked at his dinner. And, Sakura, Naruto, what did you end up training today? Nothing much sensei, we just worked on getting better chakra control, we'll probably start working on techniques tomorrow, Naruto had to finish a mouthful of food before responding with a smile. Okay, that's it. Dope, outside right now. Sasuke stood up from his position at the table and walked toward the door. What do you want Sasuke? I want to fight you, he said coolly before crossing the threshold. As Naruto got up to follow him, Kakashi grabbed his arm, are you sure this is a good idea? I need to teach him a lesson sensei, he won't learn it any other way. Don't worry though, I won't beat him up too bad, as he got to the door he turned back, actually, I have an even better idea, Sakura-chan come with me please. Knowing to trust in Naruto by now she got up and walked with him outside, leaving Kakashi to follow, lest he let one of his students get injured, while he wasn't keeping an eye on them. Sasuke was standing outside in a fighting stance ready to face off with Naruto. He was sorely disappointed when Naruto pushed Sakura forward instead. What's the meaning of this dope? Yeah what are you trying to do Sakura said, turning back to her friend and sensei. Apparently Sasuke is having difficulty grasping that sometimes you need the help of the people that care about you in order to improve. So I thought I'd prove it to him by having him face off with someone he could have sleepwalked through two months ago, but who is now a bonafide Ichiha ass kicking machine. Namely you, he grinned and pointed at Sakura as she stood there white in the face. BB but I can't her, Sakura-chan, Naruto beckoned her clothes and lowered his voice, you have to do this for Sasuke, don't hold back, even though you feel the way you do. Beat him and show him what accepting someone's help can do for you. It's the only way he'll listen to reason. Do it to help him. And don't hold back, I know he won't. Sakura turned back to her crush. She knew what she had to do. She had to help Sasuke. You can't be serious dope. Don't underestimate her Sasuke team, now you wanted to fight, well fight. Sakura was the first to make a move, rushing to within striking range, with a much improved speed over the old academy Sakura. As they engaged in a small tajutsu exchange, Kakashi leaned over to Naruto. You really think she can take Sasuke? She may not look it, but she's improved a lot. Sure her tajutsu may not be up to scratch against Sasuke, but she has great chakra control. I asked Jiraiya if he might teach her some rudimentary earth-style techniques, as earth is the element she has an affinity with. He could only show her the basics, but we've been working on them since. This will be close I think. Sasuke has too much confidence in himself, that or denial, but either way it'll work to Sakura's advantage, Naruto responded in a low voice. The two fighting genin broke apart for a second before Sakura sought cover in the tree line that ran almost up to the back of the house. Sasuke went to follow but was soon forced to stop, as five Sakuras appeared from behind the nearest tree, all brandishing kunai ready to throw. He quickly went to strike each of them, only to have them fade away as he got close. So where's the real one? Looking around all Sasu could see was trees. The next thing he knew he was face first on the ground. The real Sakura had dropped onto him from above, after having created the clones and run straight up the other side of the tree. Sasuk was angry that a pathetic whiny girl had jumped him. Spinning up from the ground he knocked her off him and she rolled away. As he stood up, Kakashi's eyes widened as he went through a series of hand seals. They went even wider when Naruto put his hand across to stop him from doing anything. Sasuke finished his seals and inhaled deeply Katen. Nkakak no jutsu, fire release. Great fireball technique. Sakura's was shocked at the technique Sasuke would use against her, but responded accordingly, she went through a quick series of hand seals Doten. Dorakeki, earth release. Earth style wall. Before the oversized fireball could do her any harm, a solid wall of earth projected up out of the ground, protecting her from the blast. What Sasuke didn't see from his side of the blast, through the smoke and rubble, was Sakura perform another jutsu. When the area cleared she was completely gone. He saw the wall come up so he knew she hadn't been killed or burned to ashes, he knew his fireball technique wasn't that strong yet anyway. So where was she? Where did she go? 
before long his question was answered as he stood warily waiting for her to show her face. He never expected for her hands to shoot out of the ground and latch around his ankles. What was even more surprising was when the earth beneath his feet softened and he was pulled into the ground up to his shoulders. With just his arms, head and a fraction of his torso above the ground he couldn't attack her when she resurfaced next to Naruto and Kakashi looking a little exhausted. What the hell was that? Sasuke was again enraged that he'd been outdone by Sakura. That was the Doton. Maguragakur no Jutsu, hiding like a mole technique, pretty cool huh? She was happy that she'd been able to defeat Sasuke, it meant that she really was improving a great deal as a shinobi, she turned to Naruto, wow that really took it out of me, guess I still need to keep up training my chakra reserves. You bet Sakura. Now, he said as he walked over to Sasuke who was still trying to pull himself out of the now rock solid ground and pointed to Sakura, that is what happens when you let people who care about you help you Sasuke. You improve. You have to be able to accept help from those closest to you if you want to be the best that you can be. Would you even care if any of us were to die on this mission right now Sasuke, because we all would. Apart from letting people who care about us help us, we care about them too. We draw our strength from wanting to protect them. And none of us would let anything happen to each other if we were alive to do something about it. Sakura was able to do what she just did because of her drive to try and help you Sasuke, to protect you from yourself, from your pride. To show you that you sometimes need to let others help you. Maybe one day you'll realize that true strength doesn't come from hatred and a mission of revenge, but the drive to protect those that are precious to you. He took everyone that was precious to me. Sasuke screamed from his position in the ground. I lost everyone that would have been precious to me Sasuke, yet I found precious people in my life, my team, my friends, my village even. They are all things that I draw strength from in my mission to be the best that I can be. We are all waiting for you to see that Sasuke. Sasuke, Kakashi was concerned for his student, this revenge you seek won't make you happy. Be better than the man that killed your family. Make your own life for yourself, set yourself down a different path. Because the path you are on is the one that he wants you on. Don't give your brother that satisfaction Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, we all care for you. Even Naruto, otherwise he would never have offered to help you and wouldn't be trying to help you now. Can't you realize that you are precious to us? I want to become a shinobi that would make my parents proud, don't you want to as well? Naruto looked down at the struggling genin who had tears in his eyes and walked away into the forest to lie down. He didn't feel like going back inside, after what had just transpired he needed to relax. Sakura pulled Sasuke out of the ground and after getting a glare that told her he wanted to be alone left after Naruto. Sasuke walked over to a tree sitting down beneath it with his head in his hands, trying to blink away the tears that were just now starting to pour down his face. Could it be true? Everything they said seemed to make sense and it was this fact that had Sasuke in tears of both sorrow and anger. What would happen if he decided to accept their help? What would happen if he continued in his quest for revenge? Sasuke sat, inner turmoil on display for Kakashi as he wept. His sensei just took a seat against a nearby tree and waited with his eyes closed as his student tried to work everything out. I really hope you can see the truth of our word Sasuke, I really do. The next time Sasuke looked up tears were pouring from a pair of blood red eyes. Did we really do the right thing Naruto-kun? Sakura asked as they walked through the woods. We did the only thing we could Sakura-chan and we have to keep trying until he realizes what is wrong, putting an arm the distraught girl and giving her a one-armed hug he continued, you fought great out there tonight by the way. It was great to see how much you've improved. Thanks Naruto-kun, she hugged him back before they settled down in a small clearing and lay down, looking up at the stars. I really hope that we get through to him Naruto-kun. So do I Sakura-chan. They lay watching the stars for a while before Sakura got back up to head to the house and a comfortable bed. Good night Sakura-chan, Naruto said from his position under the gown, I think I'm going to lay here for a bit longer. Good night Naruto-kun, thank you for everything. Chapter 5. The bridge. When Naruto awoke the next morning he was greeted with a sight he hadn't expected to see. There was a beautiful female ninja strolling across the field toward him. He knew she was a ninja from the fact that she was making almost no sound as she walked, ninja had a habit of doing that wherever they went, civilians, not so much. Fencing when she saw him open his eyes she flicked a senbin into her hand. I know you're a shinobi, Naruto said, but I don't want to fight you. How can I trust you, her sweet voice drifted over to him. From the looks of it you could have killed me from a distance with that senbin while I slept. You didn't so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Now that I'm awake however you'd be hard pressed to actually kill me anyway. What's your name, because I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, he had a sheepish grin on his face and yawned, his hand rubbing the back of his head. Haku was unsure of what to do. She could have killed him while he slept, but that just hadn't felt right. He had looked so peaceful from where she was standing. He didn't seem threatening now that he was awake, so she guessed she could go along with it, as long as she got these supplies back to Zabuza, I'm Haku. So what are you out here gathering herbs for Haku? 
Naruto inquired innocently, trying to lighten the mood. They are for someone very close to me, they were injured, and these are going to help them get better. Well do you want a hand gathering them? I could make your job a lot easier, a number of clones appeared before Haku could object and began searching through the woods and clearing for the herbs that Haku needed, now sit down, Naruto said with a smile, but I, no buts, come on and sit down, my clones will still get the herbs you need, don't worry, okay, she said sitting down opposite from him, still wary of what he was doing, for a while they explained pleasantries, with Naruto explaining that he was a going to be Hokage one day and protect the village, then out of nowhere, he asked a rather unexpected question. So Haku, is abuser recovering well enough? She flinched, not knowing how the boy who was only just younger than she was had figured it out. Calm down, like I said I don't want to fight, Naruto tried to defuse the situation before she could take any action against him. I could tell you were a ninja from the way you walked, you said you needed to help someone who was close to you, you use Senban, and you have the same build as a hunter nin that carried away one supposedly dead Zabuza, your facial twitch just then confirmed my suspicions. Don't worry, like I said I don't want to cause you any harm. We both have our missions, it just so happens that they oppose each other. I'll hold no grudge against you for it, but I do hope we can get through this with as little bloodshed as possible. All Haku could do was nod in response. She didn't know what it was about this kid she liked, but she knew that he wasn't going to hurt her while she sat there with him. He was too sincere. As Naruto's clones walked back over each with a pile of herbs he got up. Well here are your herbs Haku, I have to get back to my team, I just want you to know that even if I don't want bloodshed, I'll still protect my team with everything that I have. So is that where you get your strength from? From willing to do anything to protect those close to you? Naruto nodded before disappearing. Me too Naruto. I guess next time we meet we'll see whose desire to protect is stronger. Naruto appeared next to Sakura, having used her seal as a beacon for his Horatian no Jutsu. Where have you been? Sakura looked concerned as she worked on improving her earth release, he could hear Sasuke trying to still climb a tree not too far from them, Kakashi figured you'd be okay and had to head off to defend Izuna, but where were you? Same place I was when you left me last night, I fell asleep haha, <laughs> he rubbed the back of his head a little embarrassed, and then I met the hunter nin that I now know saved Zabuza's life, we didn't talk for long, but she seemed nice enough, what? Sakura screeched, you didn't have to fight her or anything. Well no, that's not part of our mission, and I'd rather not have to hurt people if I can get away with it. She could have most likely killed me as I slept but didn't, so I gave her the benefit of the doubt. It wasn't like she didn't know who I was. Okay, well as long as you are safe Naruto-kun, at least now we know that Zabuza will probably make another attempt at Tazuna's life. Naruto nodded, anyway, now that you're here let's get back to training, Sakura smiled, looking forward to the day ahead. They were surprised when Sasuke approached them halfway through the day looking as downcast as ever, a hint of frustration glinting in his eyes when he turned his head toward them. What do you want now Sasuke team, I don't want to fight you, I'm training with Sakura-chan. Naruto said sizing up the Ichiha. Actually, I wanted to ask if you could help me with wall walking, Naruto could tell just by looking at him that it was taking all of Sasuke's effort to suppress his pride just to walk over and ask that simple question. Sure no problem, Naruto said with a sincere smile as he created a number of clones to go and offer the young Ichiha instruction, these guys will let you know what you might be doing wrong. As Sasuke walked away with the clones, Naruto turned back to Sakura, maybe we're finally getting the message across. He said hopefully before they both smiled at the small change that they'd made in Sasuke. By the end of the day Sasuke had finally gotten the hang of wall walking and had started going through light sparring exercises with Naruto's clones. Kakashi was pleased by the progress that the Ichiha had made and was even more impressed that he'd asked for help. Naruto explained that tomorrow he'd teach the Ichiha water walking if he wanted the help. Surprisingly enough he accepted. The next day when Sakura was off training with a Naruto clone in the woods, Sasuke was standing with the real Naruto at the edge of the water near the house. Okay Sasuke, you seem to pick up while walking pretty quickly with our pointers. Water walking however is fairly difficult in that you have to adjust the amount of chakra sent to your feet constantly in order to stay afloat, as opposed to the constant level you send to your feet in while walking. You should get the hang of it pretty easily, but we'll start you out on the shallow water. It took Sasuke most of the day to get the hang of the technique, but by the end of the day he was slowly edging out further and further over deeper water. Naruto slowly started throwing stones at him to try and break his focus, but the Ichiha was a fast learner and very rarely fell in after that exercise, until Naruto did something completely unexpected. He called out to the Ichiha to get his attention, but when Sasuke looked up to find his friend he went wide in the face and a small amount of blood trickled from his nose. There standing before him was a gorgeous brunette that looked about 18 years old. She was the epitome of perfect with just the right amount of ridiculous curves, and she was completely naked save for the smoke that surrounded her chest and pelvic region. Sasuke probably would have passed out from the nosebleed he would have received had Naruto not bothered with the smoke. 
it was easily enough to break his concentration and send him plummeting into the drink. When he resurfaced Naruto was on rolling around in his original form in a laughing fit. Over in the trees Kakashi's hidden shadow clone had passed out on the ground from lack of blood and dispelled. On the bridge everyone was quite confused as to why the Kanoha Jounin had rocketed down the length of the bridge with a torrent of blood pouring from his nose and proceeded to pass out from blood loss. Sasu couldn't help but smile at the tactic employed by his teammate, even if it had gotten him soaking wet. You're such a pervert dope. How am I the pervert Sasu team, you're the one that got the nosebleed. Bahahahaha, <laughs> Naruto was trying to talk in between fits of laughter. How could anyone but a pervert come up with that move? Naruto could see his logic, but it only made him laugh harder. What was even better was that Sasuke seemed to be genuinely smiling for once. Okay, enough joking around. Get back to throwing rocks at me, Sasuke said as he slowly and steadily pulled himself out of the water. Okay, Sasuke-kun, a soft female voice echoed across the water as the now brunette sex bomb started throwing rocks at the genin, and it wasn't long before all the smoke had cleared. Needless to say Sasuke had never had a stranger training session. Jumping across the top of the water while dodging rocks with a constant stream of blood streaming down his face. The fact he wasn't falling in this time was the only consolation he could give himself. It was all fun and games until Sakura arrived back on the shore and saw what was happening. She spent the next half an hour chasing Naruto around trying to beat the living daylights out of him, while Sasuke just laughed at the scene. When she realized she couldn't catch Naruto-kun she stormed out onto the water and started chasing Sasuke. Why was her Sasuke-kun a pervert? The nosebleed hadn't gone unnoticed. Over the next few days Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura bonded more as a team, Sasuke slowly getting over some of his hang-ups. They worked on team combinations using their jutsu. Naruto and Sasuke even tried to combine their flame and wind techniques Tom. Tatapa, wind release. Great break though, and Katen. Nkakak no jutsu, fire release. Great fireball technique to destructive effect, both agreeing that they would only use that combination on someone they really hated. Its destructive power was easily enough to incinerate a small portion of the forest when they used it. One night as they were sitting at the table, Inari had finally had enough. He hated these ninja and told them that what they were trying was futile and that they should give up. A short yet fiery retort from Naruto about how little respect for quitters he had and how he and Sasuke were still going strong after everything they'd been through shut the kid up as he ran outside. Sorry Kakashi, but it needed to be said, he stood and went upstairs to sleep. They trained throughout the week, preparing for the attack they knew was going to come, now that they knew Zabuza was alive. As the week progressed they knew Zabuza would be gaining strength. For this reason Kakashi started taking Sakura with him to help protect the bridge, that way they could all be on the scene in seconds, thanks to Naruto's Horatian no jutsu. And so one morning as Naruto and Sasuke trained outside the small house Naruto felt the familiar chakra pulse in his arm. He turned to Sasuke, looks like they need us on the bridge Sasuke team. Well get us over there, Naruto created a few clones before walking over to Sasuke, guys, keep Tsunami and Inari safe, and don't let them out of your sight. Gato might have men come after them, and with that Sasuke and Naruto disappeared. When they appeared on the bridge they couldn't see five feet in the thick mist. They appeared next to Sakura and could hear Kakashi and Zabuza talking. So the brat that was talking to my Haku is finally here, Zabuza said, hearing them arrive through the mist, that's a pretty handy technique he's got there. That's only the half of it Zabuza, Kakashi was standing between the three genin and Zabuza, ready to fight the missing nin. You don't need to let your genin get killed Kakashi, I might be inclined to spare you all if you just let me have Tazuna. Never. Naruto wasn't going to fail his mission, he liked the old man, as much of a drunk as he was. Your funeral kid, Haku, take care of Tazuna. Naruto could barely see what was in front of him, but at the last second he saw a movement in the mist and managed to bring a Horatian kunai up in time to deflect the senbon that was heading straight for the old man. Guys we need to get out of this mist, Naruto urged his team backwards toward the completed end of the bridge, trying to catch a glimpse of his opponent. Haku made a few attempts to stop them, but was thwarted by the three as they protected the bridge builder. She finally emerged from the mist as they all now stood in the open. You have to come to us, so let's see how you fight without that mist, Naruto was confident that he could take whatever this girl could throw at him. Just what I expected from him, he was observant enough to work out who I was, it's no surprise he changed the battlefield to give him the advantage. It's no matter, I'll complete this mission for Zabuza-sama if it's the last thing I do. Naruto was a little confused with the way Haku talked about Zabuza, but figured there was some personal reason behind the honorific. They all stood tense, waiting to see who would make the first move, while the sound of metal striking metal echoed from their sensei's conflict. It was Naruto who acted first, trying to test the waters as he threw regular kunai at the missing nin. She dodged them easily before responded with a barrage of accurate senbon. Unfortunately he had to try and block most of them as stepping out of the way would put Tazuna in danger. A few of them made it past his guard and struck him in the chest. 
he didn't feel any pain though, and when he looked realized that the three he didn't avoid had struck a storage scroll he kept in his coat. A storage scroll that happened to contain his Horatian kunai was the one that had taken the hits. He figured that after taking three senbon straight through the center any seal he had on the scroll wasn't going to be working. Guess he was stuck with the few Horatian kunai he kept on his person. He needed to take up Sasuke's habit and store them in a bracer or something, he'd work that out if he made it through this fight. Eyes, protect Azuna I need to keep Haku away from you guys, with that he disappeared in a blur and was on the offensive, striking at Haku with his Horatian, as he kept her from attacking the bridge builder. She deftly deflected each of his strikes with her senbon before dropping down and attempting to take out his knees before he could react. Naruto flipped his Horatian kunai into the air, sending it spinning above her, and at the moment she'd fully committed to her senbon strike at his knee he disappeared, reappearing above and behind her, falling down in the perfect position to strike. Haku responded by turning from her lowered position and using the momentum from her failed attack to spin around. Just as Naruto's feet began to touch the ground and he brought his kunai down, she kicked her leg out, sweeping his feet from under him. He stuck his arm out to stop his fall and brought his own foot around at the side of her head as she was still in a crouched position. Blocking this with her left forearm but feeling the power of the kick she was shaken and retreated for the moment to get some space and rethink her approach. This time though when they broke apart she was now between him and Tazuna. Not willing to take any more chances with Naruto and his ability to seemingly teleport Haku went through a short series of hand seals before any of the genin could respond. An ice mirror formed behind Haku, preventing Naruto's approach, but he could see another mirror forming behind Tazuna. This can't be good Naruto thought when he saw what appeared to be the reflection of Haku appear in that mirror, reaching out for the old man. Naruto was next to Tazuna in the blink of an eye, thanks to the seal on Sakura, deflecting the senbon that the Misin Nin was projecting towards his brainstem. Having had her attack thwarted by the strange blonde she took the opportunity to attack his black-haired teammate, the only one of three not guarded. He had his newly acquired Sharingan active, but it didn't help him stop the attack that came at him so quickly. Two Senbin struck him in the neck, while three hit him in the chest, and in an instant Haku was emerging from her first mirror. Sasuke stumbled, the Sharingan in his eyes flickering as he fell. Naruto managed to catch him before he hit the ground and quickly removed the needles before setting him down. What did you do to him? I'm afraid he won't be waking up again, I'm sorry, but I cannot let anyone stand in the way of Zabuza-sama's goal. Naruto checked the Ichiha's vitals and was shocked to find them deteriorating rapidly, he could barely feel his pulse. No Sakura don't. It was already too late, in her anger at Haku over what she'd done Sakura had charged the Senban wielding Kinoichi. It put her on the defensive for a second before Haku jumped back and went through a series of hand seals again, Makam Heimshm, demonic mirroring ice crystals. A large number of the ice crystals appeared surrounding Sakura. No, this is bad Naruto though as he looked between Tazuna, Sakura and Sasuke. He was about to Horatian to Sakura to get her out of what looked to be a death trap, but saw at the last second Haku throwing Senbon from the mirror that was still behind Tazuna, the old man frozen in fear during the whole fight. Naruto cursed, rushing toward the old man and pushing him out of the line of fire, just before the projectiles would have killed him. As he did so he flung one of his kunai at the ground and disappeared, but it was too late. In saving Tazuna he'd given Haku enough time to launch an attack at Sakura. By the time he arrived by her side, even if it was just mere seconds, the girl was riddled with senbon and looked to be just holding on to her life. He flashed back to the kunai he'd just previously left on the bridge and tried to place her on the ground as comfortably as he could. Don't worry Sakura, hold on, I'll keep you safe. I'll keep you safe, Naruto had tears running down his face as his eyes flickered red and his fingernails grew into claws. Yes boy, draw on my power, you needed to take revenge on that ice bitch, without it you'll never save your friends. He could hear a strange gruff voice in the back of his head. He disappeared into his mindscape, letting the rage take over. Growling, the enraged Naruto disappeared in a red blur, intent on rending Haku in two. The killing intent washing over everyone was enough to force Tazuna to his knees. Tazuna's house. As the three Naruto's sat in the trees around the house they heard two men walking down the road. Ahahaha those ninja won't know what hit them. Gato's plan is brilliant, how about we celebrate our success today by having our way with that hot milfed tsunami. That bitch is fine -y, one of the sword-wielding thugs was saying to the other. Only if I get to go first, we can even make that little brat watch, ha 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 ha. I'm afraid that won't be happening today, or ever for that matter, one of Naruto's clones said as it dropped down in front of him. What does a little runt like you think you can do to stop us? Oh nothing. Just this maybe, and with that the other two clones emerged from either side with chains made of chakra extended from their hands. Within seconds the thugs were bound to a tree, and the head clone was standing in front of them. Now you are going to tell me everything I want to know about Gato's plan, or, or what? What are you going to do you little shit, one of the thugs still had a little confidence. 
I'm going to cut off your balls and make you eat them, because rapists are scum, and as Naruto dropped the pants of one who had spoken and twirled a kunai in his hand, they spilled every one of their dirty little secrets. Naruto was destroying Haku. He had broken all of her mirrors and was overwhelming her with his feral tojutsu as he raged about the fate of his teammates. He was about to make the killing blow on the missing nin when images flashed into his head, memories from one of his clones. His clawed hand stopped inches away from her face. What are you doing? Take revenge, finish her, use the power that I've given you. No, this doesn't need to end in any more bloodshed Naruto thought as he tried to fight back the rage and hate that had been let loose. Eventually he managed to get himself back under control and compassed himself as Haku lay broken on the ground. Zabuza, Kakashi-sensei, stop fighting. This doesn't have to end in any more deaths. Haku was willing to die for you Zabuza just to protect your wishes, is that what you really wanted? The way he said that makes it sound like someone is already gone, Kakashi turned toward the sound of his students stunned and wide-eyed at what he was hearing. The two Jounin separated for a moment while they turned and listened to the genin. I have evidence that Gato was going to betray you Zabuza, your mission was for naught, now stop fighting. Where is this evidence kid? How do I know this isn't some trick Kakashi thought up? I don't know anything about it Zabuza, Kakashi said as he turned to the demon of the hidden mist. Within seconds Naruto had disappeared and reappeared with two men and two clones, Naruto's clones still had them firmly secured on their knees, wrapped in chakra chains. Zabuza let the mist fade to see what the kid was trying to show them. These are two of Gato's thugs who I caught about to try and rape Tsunami, they were also talking about Gato's brilliant plan. Now boys, how about you tell the guys over there what you told me, and maybe I'll be inclined not to carry out my threat. DG Gato was planning on betraying you after you completed your mission and were weakened by the enemy ninja, one of the men hurriedly blurted out, fearful of what the young genin might do to them if he refused to say. He really should have been afraid of Zabuza though. The man lifted his huge sword and slowly walked over to the two men who were on their hands and knees on the bridge, too weak to stand. When he got next to them he raised Kubikarabjum, ignored their pleas for mercy, and decapitated both of them in one strike. Well 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 it looks like you really were useless Abusa, a short man said from his position at the end of the bridge, revealing that he was now there. He was surrounded by a large number of mercenaries. Beto, you little double-crossing bastard, Zabuza spat, I really didn't think you'd have the balls to betray me, but it's your funeral, he disappeared, and with a swing of his massive blade, brought an end to the twisted little man's life. It wasn't long before the mercenaries were lying dead, scattered all about the bridge, they were no match for even an injured Zabuza. While they were doing this Naruto quickly ran back over to Sasuke and Sakura, checking to see if they were okay. Sakura was in a stable condition but was still unconscious thankfully. Sasuke had the faintest of heartbeats, but it seemed as if he'd recovered slightly from earlier. Either Haku hadn't aimed to kill, or Sasuke, with his Sharingan, had been able to move enough in time to avoid death. Naruto was relieved beyond belief. Even with all his training his teammate still almost got killed. He removed the senbon scattered about their bodies and flashed them back to Tsunamis where he'd left a kunai, making sure she treated them and got some rest. He then came back and checked on Haku as Ibuza and Kakashi just stood watching. She was in a bad shape, but she seemed as if she was going to make it. Why did you spare me? Why didn't you take my life after what you saw me do to your friends, she whispered from her position on the ground. The two Jounin level ninja heard her as they walked closer. Because violence isn't the answer, Naruto said as he handing her over to Zabuza. At this Kakashi smiled and Zabuza turned to him, some genin you've got, looks like we didn't need to be enemies after all. Maybe next time we see each other we'll be allies, and with that Zabuza Mamachi, the demon of the hidden mist, disappeared into the shroud that had once again settled over the bridge. Let's get back to Tazuna's Kakashi Sensei, I think we could all do with a rest. Tell me about it. Over the next week they all recovered from their injuries, Tazuna completed the bridge, and they headed back to Konoha finally crossing the completed Great Naruto Bridge. They got back to the village, and Kakashi gave the report to the Hokage. The mission was a close call, and easily an A grade. I'm a little worried about what happened with Naruto. It would appear that in times of extreme emotional distress and anguish, he's more inclined to draw on the Kyuubi's chakra. He seemed to get it under control before he took a life unnecessarily, even if it was the enemy, but I'll be making sure to keep a closer eye on him. Yes that would seem to be the wisest course of action, the Hokage said from behind his desk, a look of concern upon his face. Over the next few weeks Asuk seemed to lighten up a little and was more inclined to come and train with Naruto and Sakura after the events in the Land of Waves. He was finally starting to act civil with everyone, even Sakura. They still called each other Dope and Sasuke team, but that was more just out of habit and a running joke between the two rather than out of malice or disdain. They improved as a team and even helped train the other squad sometimes. It wasn't long before one training session Kakashi called them over to talk to them. 
okay team, the tune in exams are coming up in a few months, and I've decided that I'm going to enter you for promotions. The only way you can do this though is if you all feel that you are ready, it has to be a team effort, the timid Sakura of old was gone, the obnoxious fool that was Academy Naruto nowhere in sight, and the depressed breeding Sasuke had been left in the dust. The Kashi knew they were ready, but more importantly, they knew they were ready. What if Namika's heritage revealed Naruto Chunin exams harem? Thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.